Okay, we should be live. So I wasn't sure if I was going to do this live stream. Um, I don't know if we're gonna go the full twelve hours. I don't think I'm. I I don't think I set myself up for a twelve hour live stream ahead of time. Um, but apparently the Square Enix team that's in charge of producing Final Fantasy fourteen is going to do a fourteen hour broadcast for the tenth anniversary. They're calling it tenth anniversary because the game it's. You know, the game technically 2.0 was fall 2013, or like, yeah, it was like summer, summer, fall 2013, somewhere around there. And uh, that was 10 and a half years ago now. So it's technically still the 10th anniversary. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're going to see, like, it's going to be a wait. It's still live in 104 minutes from now. So that means there's a lot of time for me to talk about whatever uh the viewers want to discuss um uh, but uh yeah we can talk mmos this is going to be an interesting stream it's kind of like the one that i did back in january 2023 i believe when i was reacting to the ces keynote so this is going to be similar to that in terms of the format uh, we'll try to do some things here to change things up to keep you guys entertained in the meantime. But good evening, everybody. This is the Game Tech Reviews channel. We cover technology, mostly tech-related stuff to the PC DIY space. But also we will discuss gaming because gaming is a large... Uh, it's a subcomponent of testing computer hardware, so... Hey, RK, how's it going? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to stream either, to be honest, because I don't know, jumping into a 14-hour live stream, I don't know if I'm going to be live the full 14 hours. We'll see how this goes. Hey, Jay, what's going on? Dawn Trail is getting closer and closer, and I'm hoping from what I expect to get from this uh, live stream is hopefully the benchmark i want them to release the benchmark so that anyone who is thinking of playing this game or anyone who's thinking of continuing to play the game or resub or they're currently still playing the game uh the system requirements for the game are going up so that being the case Anyone who's still on like a 70 year old PC might need to consider upgrading some things. So I feel like the sooner that the development team can get us the benchmark and make that publicly available to everyone, the quicker, or I guess the longer amount of time that gives people to prepare if they need to upgrade like their graphics card, for example, or they need to upgrade their CPU or whatever. Uh, so I think Final Fantasy 14 is an excellent game overall. Um, I am definitely going to be playing Dawn Trail. I went back when N Walker, when I finished N Walker, the main story about two years ago. I want to say it was like a little more than two years ago now. Uh, I told myself, you know what? That's a very good conclusion. That's a wrap for the story. I guess I'm done. I can retire from Final Fantasy 14 now. But they hyped it up with the trailer. In fact, we'll probably watch the trailer here just to kind of show. Uh, what that is all about, if you guys want to see that. But uh, I, I might get copyright struck if I play the audio too loud or whatever. So maybe we won't do that, but yeah. You want to hear my thoughts on the reported 99,000 series 40% uplift? I don't think there is a 40% uplift. If there is, that's not going to be the average uplift. Been waiting to play Final Fantasy fourteen, but haven't got around to it. Yeah, if you haven't played Final Fantasy XIV at all, uh, there's a lot of content. <laughs> Let's just say there's a lot of content. So if you're new to the game or if you're really planning to play it, you're probably not going to want to play like everything. Here, let's let's do this. Let me give you guys kind of a rundown on the overall look and feel of the game. So let I'm not going to fire up the game right now. Instead, what I'll do is I will share my screen here to show the benchmark what we'll do is we'll, we'll showcase the benchmark well we'll go through all the benchmarks how about that once this loads all 
All right, so let me just set up the benchmark settings here. Okay, we're gonna do maximum settings and then display will be 4K. Why am I not able to select 4K? Uh, you know what? Let's just do full screen. Oh, there it is. I, it's because I didn't do full screen. We'll do borderless full screen. Okay. And let me fire that up. And then what I'll do, I think I can capture the window. Hold on. Where is the window? Here we go. There we go. All right, this is the Heaven Sword benchmark. Just to give you guys an idea. Oh, you know what? Oh man, it's capped. <laughs> I've, I've capped the frame rate, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me fix that. I gotta fix that real quick. I gotta turn off the frame limiter because uh, that is not going to show the actual performance of the game. So I need to go and find the game. Hold on, what happened here? Let's paint. Let's put that back up here. Just use global settings off, apply. Yeah, normally I play Final Fantasy 14 with a frame limiter just because I don't need it to blast a lot of heat into the room because it's just an MMO. Okay. All right, now we will see the full performance. So you guys can see in the bottom right, that's gonna be the score. And it's kind of small because this is 4K native resolution. So this is the old Heaven Sword benchmark. So if you are vaguely familiar with the game, this is footage from the very first official expansion, which came out in the summer of 2015. So you're seeing 2015 era Final Fantasy XIV. Why is the audio off? Hold on, now we now I've got no audio. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, there we go. I was like, what's going on here? So, a lot of people who played Final Fantasy XIV, they, a lot of people still seem to consider Heaven Sword the first expansion, one of the best. And this music might be quite too loud. Can you guys let me know in the chat if the music is too loud. Because it's certainly loud for me, and I'm, I might have to turn it down. Because I can barely hear myself speak. But yeah, RK, in terms of the Ryzen 9000 series, 40% uplift, I think, is only the integer performance. That's not the floating point performance. So the aggregate uplift will be somewhere around 20%, if I had to guess. I'm expecting around anywhere from like 15 to 25%. So we'll just call it 20% average overall improvement over Zen 4. Yeah, I think in terms of MMOs, this game and... This game and WoW are like the two big great ones. I really hope we get the new benchmark though. I'm hoping that this live stream reveals the release date of the new benchmark because I want to see how much harder the game will be to run. I don't expect it to be that much harder to run, but they have said that the system requirements are going up. For the first time in a long time, they're raising the minimum requirements to play this game. So 
last time they did this, I want to say it was Stormblood, or maybe it was Shadowbringers, because they they removed support for the PS3 a while back, and when that when they did that, they were able to raise the graphics fidelity requirements higher. Is the audio too loud? I feel like the audio is like really loud. I like how the music that plays in these scenes doesn't actually match the music of the zones that they're showing. Are they going to update the DX? Are they going to update the DX well? So these benchmarks are all DX11. Uh, I don't know if they're going to update to DX12. They did not say that DX12... If you look at the updated requirements, they just say DX11 for both minimum and recommended. So that makes me believe that they might not have a DX12. Which if they don't, that's unfortunate. But they are going to improve the graphics though. Like they've stated that the graphics are going to improve. And that's the reason why the minimum requirements are going up. Minimum and recommended both are, are changing with this new upcoming expansion. The nice thing about these benchmarks, the Final Fantasy XIV benchmarks there are always long benchmarks. Like, there's a lot of different scenes, and they test a lot of different parts of the computer. So, like, in certain scenes, there'll be CPU mounts, in other scenes, there'll be GPU mounts. Like, this scene right here is a good mix of CPU and GPU, because there's a lot of spell effects for the GPU, and there's a lot of player characters on the screen for the CPU. So it's a, this last scene is actually the most stressful scene probably in the entire benchmark. And then it goes all out GPU bound right here. So this is the GPU being allowed to stretch its legs and go all out. This is the final scene. Never mind, there was another scene. <laughs> See, these metrics are really long. Yeah, this is definitely the final scene. This is the Nidhogg fight. And the cool thing about the benchmark is the benchmark shows off the end game armor that you get. We call, they call it the artifact gear that you get when you hit max level in the expansion. So all this armor, all the, all the gear that you're seeing right here is the gear that you get when you finish the expansion's main story and you reach level 60 because Heaven Sword in this expansion the max level was raised from 50 to 60 so all this gear is like the level 60 artifact It's down there on the screen, although it's really, really small. <laughs> I'm gonna have to turn this down. I feel like the audio is too loud. Is the audio too loud? Do you guys barely hear the audio? What? I feel like you guys probably can't hear me over the music. <laughs> I can barely hear myself, so obviously I'm gonna have to adjust the audio for my own self. It's like I just... I can barely hear myself speaking. <laughs> audio is a bit loud? Okay, yeah. Super loud audio. Oh man, almost 30k. Wow, I was just short of 30k. Extremely high. That's the highest tier you can get. That's the highest score. 29,872 at 4k native resolution maxed out. I think I'm ready to play 
Dawn Trail, guys. <laughs> I think we're ready for Dawn Trail <laughs> with a score like that. But that was the very first expansion. So here, let me go in and change the audio. The audio was like way loud. Uh, sound. Drop that to like 40% because that was super loud. Yeah, I scored 29,872 at 4K maximum preset. So everything maxed out, 4K native, no upscaling. Final Fantasy XIV does not have any upscaling options at all. It is a DX11 title, so there's no DLSS, there's no FSR, none of that stuff. So it's like, that's the reason why if you're thinking of playing the game, you definitely want to make sure your PC is ready to play the game because you cannot fall back to an upscaler to save you if your monitor is too powerful for your GPU to handle. You know what I'm saying? So that's just something to keep in mind. So that was Heaven Sword. So let me... Here, let me... Uh, what I'll do... Is I will... I'll put that in, the, in paint here so you guys can see. So we're going to keep track of these scores. So that was my first score. Or that was the first benchmark. Now we're going to do the second benchmark. And for those that are wondering what the system specs are, this is on a AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 and 96 gigabytes of RAM running at 6400 megahertz. So... These are the specs, and a Gen 4 SSD. Now let me bring up Stormblood. Let me close this one. Oh, I have to probably adjust the audio on that one because that's a separate app. It's a separate benchmark as well. But yeah, the live stream should shed light on Expected game performance, I would hope. You drop this down to like forty percent. All right, we'll do we'll do fifty percent on the master volume. Maximum start. Here we go. I need to get you guys out of the way because I can't see the chat. Oh, I got to change the... Uh... Oops. Wait, that's the launcher. Where's the actual game? There it is. Hopefully doing all that random stuff doesn't affect the score too much, but I don't really think it will. This is, so this is the second expansion. This is from the year, or the summer of 2017. Just to give you guys an idea of when this footage, when this benchmark was out. Benchmarks for, these, for this game typically release two months before the launch of the expansion so in the case of dawn trail dawn trail comes out end of june start of july which basically means you subtract two months from that so that means you know it should be now so we should be getting the benchmark pretty soon i would imagine So for those wondering, like, if you guys watch review videos for GPUs and stuff and you see, like, Final Fantasy XIV benchmark or Final Fantasy XIV as a metric in a game, like, I've used Final Fantasy XIV in my own videos when testing GPUs. I know Steve from Gamers Nexus also includes Final Fantasy. So this gives you guys an idea of what they're actually testing with.
because they are using the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark tool. They're not actually playing the game. For this specific benchmark, they're using the built-in one. Because it's actually a very good one. It's a very good comprehensive benchmark because it has lots of CPU bound tests. It has lots of GPU bound tests. There's scenes where there's a mix of both. So it's it's very good. It's probably one of my favorite benchmarks to use. You've never played a single Final Fantasy game in your entire life? Wow. What type of games do you play? Assuming you play games. Because not everybody... See, people that play Final Fantasy games, that doesn't necessarily mean they would play this game. Because this game is an MMO. So this game is a lot more like World of Warcraft and EverQuest than Final Fantasy VII. Just to use that as a comparison. So it's, it's kind of an acquired taste, I would say. Depending on if you're someone who doesn't play MMOs or for someone who's never played Final Fantasy. Now, for those who play Final Fantasy, they'll, they'll real, there's a lot for them to get out of playing the MMO, because the developers go out of their way to do all kinds of Easter eggs and include all kinds of things from the Final Fantasy universe. So, like, that whole meta world is kind of like what they'll include as different themes, uh, different, like, cameo appearances from other games, or even like characters who are basically in every Final Fantasy game. Like Final Fantasy always has a character named Sid, there's always a Chocobo, there's always a Moogle, you know, there's, there's like a lot of staples with the Final Fantasy franchise that are very recognizable. So Stormblood, this expansion added underwater and swimming. So prior to this expansion, you couldn't go in the water, and you couldn't swim, you couldn't dive, you couldn't do any of that. So they added that in this expansion. In the previous expansion that we were looking at before, the 2015 Heaven Sword, that one added flying mounts. So that added the ability to fly in the zone. So kind of like how when WoW, if you remember World of Warcraft, added flying mounts in their first expansion, Burning Crusade. So, Final Fantasy kind of followed the same format in that regards, although Blizzard always included swimming in World of Warcraft. This game didn't get swimming until this expansion, the second expansion. You never played WoW? The last MMO you played was Star Wars The Old Republic? Yeah, I, I never played Star Wars The Old Republic. Actually, you know what? Maybe I did. Maybe I did for, like, a, an open beta test or something. But I never actually played it once it was released. Yeah, the only MMOs that I've played are Final Fantasy XIV, not Final Fantasy XI, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 1, Guild Wars 2, I think I also played, like, Terra, briefly, uh, and probably some random, like, Korean MMOs, but that was, like, I wasn't even really seriously playing those games, I was just, like, trying them out because they're free to play, and they're mostly, like, pay-to-win games, so, like, Black Desert Online and those games, uh, but I never really did much with those franchises at all, so, really the only ones that I consider myself well-versed in is WoW. Final Fantasy, the original Guild Wars, and sort of Guild Wars 2, but not really, because I didn't really, I never hit max level in Guild Wars 2, so I didn't really do any endgame content, so that's pretty much my, my MMO career, if you will. So we still scored extremely high, maximum score was 25,670, so not as high as Heaven's Sword. So the score is starting to trend downward. Oh, Blade and Soul? Yeah, I never played Blade and Soul. Yeah, Terra was very CPU bound. Like, that game is so CPU bound. Alright, so I'm gonna paste the score here. Let's 
So just to kind of show the difference. So yeah, it does look like the game is slowly getting harder to run. You can see the first expansion, I scored almost 30,000. The second expansion, I scored 25,670. So now let's see how we do in the third expansion. The third expansion is... When I think of, like, what's my personal favorite expansion, it's between... It's, it's hard to say. Because I have fond memories of Heaven Sword, which is the very first one. But I don't know if I would consider that my favorite one. I really did like... I, I did like the story of Heaven Sword, but I think Shadowbringers was probably way more memorable. Oh, you played RuneScape? I've always heard a lot of things about RuneScape. I never played it. Alright, here's Shadowbringers. This is the expansion during the time of Shadowbringers. Man, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I gotta fix the sound. That's like too loud. I thought I fixed it. Oh, I didn't fix it. Okay. Cause each one of these expan each one of these benchmarks are a separate app. They're all like separate from each other. Alright. All right, here we go. This is the expansion that received all the WoW refugees. So if you guys think back to the year 2021, there was a lot of controversy with Blizzard employees, and you had a lot of big live streamers like Asvin Gold and a lot of different WoW people who left World of Warcraft out of disgust, although it was all kind of a big act, which they all eventually went back to WoW anyway. But the point is, they all went over and play, started playing Final Fantasy XIV. This was the expansion that was like the peak content of that era. So this is the third expansion. This one has probably one of the most captivating stories ever told in an MMO. Because the thing about, if you don't know anything about Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy is has excellent story narrative. The story, the characters, the emotions that you feel, uh, it's got its moments, you know, like that kind of, the music is insanely good, like just the quality is so good. So Shadowbringers was kind of the, the peak of the popularity for this game. And it, it just so happened to have a really, really good story as well. So I don't know, in terms of story, I do think Shadowbringers was really, really good. But I still have that nostalgia of the first expansion, Heaven Sword. But yeah, this one was definitely one to remember. And I just feel like if if someone wanted to make an MMO, like if Riot Games wanted to make a League of Legends MMO, because you would really, realistically, you would need a big company with a really big franchise to come in and like do an MMO that would get enough marketing hype and enough buy-in from the player base that you would be able to successfully launch the MMO and sustain it over the long run. And I feel like a lot of MMOs that I've seen that have come out in the last 10 years, they have all failed to do that. This game is like one of the few exceptions. And that's because this game has that long existing franchise, the Final Fantasy franchise, to draw upon for ideas and themes and all kinds of stuff and and the player base and the fans so it's just kind of like it, it does its own thing and that's why it's able to succeed whereas every other mmo has tried to either copy wow or dethrone wow and they've all failed to do it so this game never tried to do that and i feel like that's why it just managed to succeed in the background for the past decade
for a game that came out in 2013, but I will say the graphics have held up. It definitely looks dated, but it doesn't look bad. Like, the... The art direction of the game is very good, and I feel like that's one of the reasons why this game has stood the test of time. Because if you compare this, the look of this game to, like, Guild Wars 2, because Guild Wars 2 is a very similar game in terms of how old it is. It's like a year older than this game, but yet this game, to me, has a much better overall look and feel compared to Guild Wars. It's kind of weird how they're all underwater, but all those guys are like farming and stuff in the water. <laughs> you like story, single player story driven games. Yeah, and see that's 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 basically the Final Fantasy franchise except this game. Cuz this game's an MMO. <laughs> so that's although like to be honest, you can pretty much play almost all the content in this game solo. You can you can basically play 14 as though it was a single player game. There is only like if you really wanted to, you could. There's only a few exceptions where you would be forced to group up with other players to progress the story. Um, so if you wanted to treat it like a single player game, you could do that. Which is very... Very not like how MMOs are supposed to be played. I feel like MMOs are supposed to be very heavy in terms of that social aspect. Like, I'll use WoW Classic as an example. In WoW Classic, you can't really progress too well in that game by yourself. Like, you basically have to group up with other people. And in terms of story-driven, World of Warcraft is not story-driven at all. Like, oh, it's vaguely story-driven. So this expansion added two new classes, and this can be called them jobs. So the dancer and the gunbreaker were added in this one. And each expansion, they change the poster boy job. <laughs> it's like in that one, it was the Dark Knight. A lot of late game MMOs are incredibly toxic with respect to rating and stuff. Yeah, this game has never had a bad community for the most part. Like Final Fantasy 14, despite being an MMO, it's never really had much of a toxic uh, community. So, wow, this one actually scored higher than the other one. I wonder if I impacted the score because I, like, on the Stormblood one, because I was, like, alt-tabbing a lot in the first part when that one was trying to load. But, yeah, so my score for this one was 26,270. So, the Stormblood one, I don't know why that one scored like that. I feel like that one probably should have been like 27,000. But it's probably from alt-tabbing. And now... Hold on, where is... Okay, so the last one. Alright, so now I've got one more. I've got the, mo the most recent benchmark. So the one that Gamers Nexus uses is the one that I'm going to show next. This is the most recent one. Which is soon going to be replaced by an even newer one, which should be much harder to run. This 
is it. This is the most recent one. So this one is from the year 2021. Because of the pandemic, the release for Endwalker got shifted. It got it got delayed by like six months or so. Almost six months. It was like five months or so. So because of that, this expansion came out in December of 2021. Normally, their expansions come out in the summer. They're usually like July. But this one was December. So it, it kind of changed everything. And what's weird about these, these expansions is like the very first game, like the vanilla version, had terrible login queues at launch. The first expansion didn't really have a problem with login queues. The second expansion, Stormblood, had a lot of problems with login queues. Then Shadowbringers did not have any issues with login queues that I can remember. And then this one, Endwalker, had like really, really bad, uh, like the worst ever login queues like you could ever imagine. And that's because all the WoW refugees were playing Endwalker <laughs> at release. And there were supply shortages, so the developers, like, the Square Enix team couldn't buy more servers because they needed to add more servers cause to, to alleviate the login issues. And, uh, yeah, they couldn't do it because of the lead times. You guys remember how it was? This took this expansion came out during the dark times, when crypto was at an all-time high, when, G when RTX 3060 Ti's were going for over $900, uh, etc., you know, 3080 was like two grand. It, it was the terrible times of that era. When I think of Endwalker, I think of all those things. I think of PlayStation 5 scalpers on eBay and all that kind of stuff. This expansion is is like the, what do you call it? The, the not the poster child. It's like the, the centerpiece of that era. This expansion also accompanied Alder Lake. 12th gen came out around the time of this. It was like a month before this was Alder Lake's launch. PS3 lost support. Oh, uh, I think PS3 support ended either. It was either Stormblood or it was Shadowbringers. It was no, it was before this game. It was before this expansion. I think it was either Shadowbringers or Stormblood. Was when PS3 support was dropped. I want to say it was Stormblood, but I could be wrong. No, actually, I think it was, so PS4 support was added in the first expansion. So I believe PS3 was either dropped in the second expansion or the third expansion, which is probably Shadowbringers. Yeah, you'd have to Google it. I, I want to say PS3 was dropped in Shadowbringers. This one is the one after Shadowbringers. This is, this is the current one, Endwalker. Yes, you can play this game on console. This game at launch was on PS3 and PC. Then it became PS3, PS4, and PC. 
Uh, then it was only PS4 and PC. Now it is currently PS5, PS4, and PC. And actually, it just got Xbox Series X. Xbox finally got Final Fantasy XIV very recently. You see, they're like right now, or like a week ago, or a week from now, something like that. We'll, we'll look it up later after this. This is the final boss fight. All right, let's see if I can break 25,000. It's Xenos. This guy is like the most lame villain. Like this guy was the main villain in the second expansion. And he like died, but then somehow came back from the dead. And I came back as some like emo uh, edge lord who fights on the side. And they just kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> It's like, really? They brought back this guy that no one wanted to come back? Like, why? So, that's the reason why I feel like Shadowbringers, in terms of story, I think Shadowbringers was actually a little bit better than Endwalker. But Endwalker was really good. Like, this expansion was a very good expansion overall. But I think the previous one was probably a little bit better. And I feel like most, most people probably agree with me when I say that. Alright, so we did break 25k. 25,616. Extremely high. I'm pretty sure we're ready for the new system requirements. I don't think I have to upgrade. I think we're good. I don't need DLSS. I don't need FSR. Alright, let me put this one in the chart. I just realized that the picture, like the, the, the pose on the latest one is like that. Alright, so those are my scores. So, the, first, the oldest expansion, I scored almost 30k. So, you guys can see, the game did get slightly more demanding over the course of six years. Because it's every two years, there's an expansion. So, it's like two, four, six, so six years. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, you... So, the controller... I've never tried to play the game on controller, but I know people who do play the game on controller, and it's surprisingly easy. So, the thing with the PlayStation is you have the controller, but then you also have your keyboard. So, you can use the keyboard on the PlayStation to play the game, but most people just use the keyboard to, to do the text chat, and they'll use the actual PlayStation controller to do all the actual, like, combat functions and, and stuff like that interacting with the game world and that sort of thing and moving around so yeah so that's it that those are the four current expansions i do also have the original benchmark like the very very first like 2.0 uh where is that one i don't know if this is the right one bench world Well, we're not really going to go that far back, but I think, like, this is kind of, this is it. Uh, the very first expansion, or the, the very first benchmark, when the game first launched, it was actually a DX9 game. So, the first expansion added a DX11 client. And ever since that first expansion, everything, the game has pretty much been DX11 the whole time. Like, it, it maintained DX9 backwards compatibility, uh, which I think they dropped in the in the most recent expansion. I gotta look. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Where is what I want to do here is yeah. So it was it was. It was the second expansion where it was dropped. Right here. So right there, way back in 2017, regarding end of PlayStation 3 support. So support for PlayStation 3 is scheduled to end with the release of the latest expansion, Stormblood. So the second expansion, I was wrong. I thought it was Shadowbringers. It was actually before Shadowbringers. So PS3 was dropped when the PS4 Pro was new that's kind of when it was being dropped so ps4 pro was what 
fall 2016, and this is like 2017. So basically, PS4 Pro replaced PS3. And then uh, PS5... see here Let's see what this says okay the PlayStation 5 version of Final Fantasy 14 is available as of Tuesday May 25th 2021 okay so that means the PS5 was added during Shadowbringers so around the time when all the WoW refugees started piling into the game, that was when PS5 was added as a supported platform. So that was... Okay, so Stormblood ended PS3. Shadowbringers added PS5. Uh, did I guess Endwalker is going to get credit for adding Xbox. Xbox Series X, Final Fantasy 14. Here we go. There we go. Last month, announcing Final Fantasy 14 Xbox Series X and S version release date. There it is. Thursday, March 21st. So it's very recent. Xbox. Literally got support for this game last month. So it's almost been a month for Xbox. So, and I remember a lot of people didn't, like a lot of the Final Fantasy base was kind of joking about, like, do we want these people in here? Because it's like, like, I don't know. I, I, there's like kind of a negative stigma toward Xbox people in the Final Fantasy community because it's, when you think of like Xbox Live, you think of Gears of War lobbies, you know, and like 12 year old kids shouting obscenities on voice chat. Just, yeah, that's how it was on like Xbox 360 back in the day. Anyone who played Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo ODST, well, I don't know about ODST, but like, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> or any of the Gears of War games with Xbox Live multiplayer. Like, that console experience with the voice chat was a very defining thing of console gaming at its peak, which was mostly the PS3 and the Xbox 360 era. So, uh, yeah. So that's why people didn't really want that in there. Forza could be the same. Oh, man. <laughs> really? I would not expect a racing simulator to have that kind of problem. <laughs> but I'm not really too surprised. <laughs> Playing this on console must be miserable because you have to pay both the Xbox multiplayer fee and the monthly subscription for the actual game. Uh, I don't know if you have to pay the subscription, though. I, I don't think you have to. No, I, I don't know about that because... Well, okay, maybe you do because it's saying Game Pass perks. But uh, I, I know that people who play this on PlayStation, they don't have to play pay for PSN just to play this. Like, another example I can give you, people who play Genshin Impact on PlayStation, they don't have to play for PSN. They, they don't have to they don't have to have an active PSN subscription to access Genshin Impact online. So oh for Xbox you do, but PlayStation you don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure like for Final Fantasy, the people who play it on the PS5, they don't have to play like if they literally all they do is play Final Fantasy 14 on the PS5 and they don't play any other multiplayer PS5 games. They're not pay they're not paying for the PSN, so if the game is not free to play, you have to pay for PS Plus. Yeah, if it's a multiplayer game, I think you're right. All right, let's see. So it's now it's now less than an hour before the live stream. Um, hold on, do I, well, I might actually get demonetized if I play the trailer. I kind of wanted to play the trailer, but I don't want to get demonetized, because the last time I did that, 
it depends on the video. Like, sometimes my videos get flagged if there's music playing in the background. And other times they don't. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what causes it to get triggered, but I won't bother. Uh, but, yeah, Xbox has support. Um, let's see. What did I want to cover here? Uh, the 14... They're going to do a 14-hour live stream. 14-hour live stream from the development team. That is dedication. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be live for 14 hours. because I just want to hear if they're going to announce the benchmark. And I want to see if they're going to show off the the armor sets, the, the artifact gear for all the jobs. Like, if they're going to show that. I don't know if they're going to show that in this. Because I think there's like one more live letter before the expansion's release date. Which is going to be in May. Like mid to late May. So I don't know if this is going to cover that. But this is literally a 14 hour broadcast. So if you have that many hours on your live stream, like why would you not show all of that? So I have no idea what they're going to talk about for 14 hours. Um... But oh, they actually have they actually have an agenda. Wow. Okay, so for the first for the first two and a half hours, they're gonna do letter from the producer live. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not actively playing the game right now, so I I'm, I can't even. I don't even really know what this is. I know they're talking about the minions. What, what is this? We'll see. Like people are gonna show their like cats and dog, their pets or whatever. Like someone's gonna show their pet turtle. The Primal's 10th anniversary, looking forward and back. Alright, that sounds like a concert. I will most likely get demonetized if I have that playing. A Stroll with Yoshi P. Developers Roundtable Discussion. Man, that's long. Look how long that is. Like, uh, this is three hours. The Roundtable Discussion is three hours. How? That's longer than most full-length feature films. Like, three hours of a developer roundtable discussion? Man, that's all... That's that's dedication, though. You have to admit, like, the development team... They put a lot of effort... Into interacting with their player base. And this is part of the reason why... Final Fantasy is has such a staunch... Uh, following... Compared to people who play other MMOs. Or, like, other MMO gaming companies. You know, like, the only other game that I can think of that has the, this level of fan base is probably... Well, no, I was going to say Genshin Impact uh, or League of Legends, but not really. I feel like League of Legends, because that community is so toxic, the it's always like there's a hate relationship. It's like, there's like a, it's, it's like the players and the developers are in this in this uh, abusive relationship. You know what I mean? Like that's that's how it is between Riot and their player base. It's like every now and then they'll throw them a bone, but it's like all the skins are like so many dollars, it's ridiculous. And I feel like Genshin Impact is the same way. Like the player base and the developers have this abusive relationship where it's all it's abusive only one way. Where the players are the ones that are obviously abused. <laughs> like, and they just keep coming back for more. So it's it's such a weird thing. But like this game. This game doesn't have that problem. Like this game. It's, it's give and take. It's not like this one way abusive relationship. Like this is the fact that these guys are going out of their way. To do a 14 hour live stream. Uh, and a three hour long developers roundtable discussion and the fact that there's like a 90 minute concert in the middle like that to me shows like that it's not an abusive relationship it's a two-way street you know what i mean so this is very different from like when i think of riot games the the best that they have given back to their player base is is um what is the name of that show on Netflix that they did? The animated show? Was it Arcane or something? Like, they made a live... They made an actual show a few years ago on Netflix. I think it was called Arcane. And it was pretty good. And I feel like that is an example of Riot giving back to their fans. Like, doing things like that. 
Obviously, there's Worlds, but Worlds is definitely more of the esports scene, so I don't really consider that giving back to their player base. Uh, that's that's only really for those that are playing at the highest levels of competition. So, but you know, a lot of people like that because esports. It's the same as the people who like football teams, and, the, and they never really get anything back from the football teams or anything really, like basketball, NBA, you know, MLB, etc. All of that. But that's dedication, and that's the reason why, regardless of what other whatever happens in the gaming industry, I feel like as long as Yoshi P has said, as long as the players keep enjoying the game, they'll keep working on the game. Like he doesn't have any intention of quitting. Uh, I think the problem, though, I don't say it's a, I don't, I won't say it's a problem, but I really wish that they would consider making a different type of game. And please don't do a live service game. I feel like that's so overdone. But I wouldn't be surprised if there, if Square Enix is working on a live service game. Because when you think about gaming these days, it's all about live service and getting you to play the game as long as possible in a repetitive, easy-to-play fashion. It's not like Souls games. It's not like gaming from 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's a completely different landscape compared to the way it was a long time ago. And that's why I feel like the old games, like games from the SNES, the N64, the PS1, the PS2, like that era, that was where you saw a lot more what I call... B, B games or like mid tier games. You know what I mean? Like they're not a triple A studio in terms of graphics and audio, but they're not like a bargain bin mobile game. They're somewhere in between. And the gameplay of these mid tier games was, is actually really, uh, it's actually very engaging. Like, a lot of the From Software games were always, like, B-tier games. They were never a AAA studio until they became popular. You know, because because there was a lack of challenging content in games. Double-A, yeah, you can think of them as double-A. I guess double-A is a good way to describe those type of games. You know, games like Near Automata, Near, uh, that was never really, like, uh, what was that one? Uh, Drakengard or Drakengard. Those are what I consider like B tier games. I guess the very, the first God of War on the PlayStation 2, the very first one, that's kind of like a B tier game or a double A. We'll call it a double A game. Yeah. Though there's not a lot of those anymore. You don't really see those. Now I feel like there's only three categories of games. Your game is either a triple-A, high-budget game like Horizon, Forbidden West, or Spider-Man, meaning it's usually like a first-party title, like Halo Infinite, or it's a mobile game, which is typically a live-service game, like Genshin Impact, uh, Honkai Star Rail, Fate, Fate Zero, whatever, like or Fate something, FGO, I forget what that actually stands for. But there's like a whole bunch of those type of games, live service games in general, that I technically Helldivers is Helldivers Two is kind of a live service game. It's like, it's like, it 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 kind of borders it it trends the fine line of being a live service game and also being a high budget game because it's like Sony's the publisher. So it's, yeah, every now and then you have stuff like that. Live service games are very overdone. Yeah, they are. But the the, the reason why they are is because those are the ones that are the easy money making machines. You know, unless they fail to capture an audience and then they just kind of go away. The big gamble with live service games though for there's a gamble for both sides. Like if you're the developer, the gamble is whether or not your game will gain an actual following and have enough people supporting the game uh, monetary wise. For a long period of time. The, the gamble for the player. Is. If they get heavily invested in the game. 
there's a chance that the game goes away if it fails, and literally then all that money that they spent on the game was a waste because the game goes offline, it vanishes, and that's it, right? So that's that's a huge risk for from the player's point of view. So I feel like live service, even though it's way overdone, I feel like it is too easy to make that carrot on a stick uh, gameplay loop. And as long as they can hype it up and market it well enough and get enough people playing it initially that they can keep cranking out content on regular intervals and keep people playing the game, I think that's the most lucrative one. And that's the reason why they're so overdone. Because it's easy to get someone to play when it's free to play initially, right? Like, the barrier to entry is so low, so low risk up front because you don't have to spend any money, it's free. And they, and they bombard you with all these dopamine hits of, like, all this free currency, in-game currency, you know, free wishes, whatever. So you start playing, and then you get hooked on the game. So it's... And it's hard to leave the more you go and invest yourself into the game. Your time, in a lot of cases, money. You know, so it's like you don't want to just quit the game because now it's like, hey, you just wasted all your time and money on that game. Um, you know, what was the point of doing all that? So it, it becomes kind of like a catch-22 where you're kind of trapped, so to speak, and it's really hard to quit. So, yeah, that's that's why, like, if it wasn't for live service games, I would say MMOs were the, the poster boy of that sort of problem because subscription-based MMOs used to have the exact same criticism. People used to criticize World of Warcraft for the subscription fee is like you have to pay a subscription to pay a game to play a game like what is up with that that's weird who would do that well apparently millions of people would do it yeah that's what made wow blow up and get really big and the it was a criticism of mmos at the time because it's like why like the more you spend money via subscription fees to play the game the more invested you become in the game to the point where you spend your time playing the game and you don't want to play other games because you feel like that's a waste of your time because you're already spending money on this game. So why would you go buy or play a different game? You know what I mean? And if all your friends are playing the same game, like if you're in a guild with like 12 of your friends or whatever, or even and it's like a really big guild and you're doing like end game raiding, then you're all caught up in the community aspect of the game. And that's even more addicting than the fact that you're playing paying the subscription fee every month so it yeah that was the huge thing but then obviously li live service came out and free to play and pay to win and all those sort of things and that that kind of changed gaming so the way i think about it was back in the day it was just games and they were just fun and they're mostly single player then multiplayer games started showing up you know like starcraft brood war uh counter strike uh, 1.6, uh, Age of Empires, Call of Duty, like all the multiplayer games that weren't really live service games, but then they started adding uh, loot boxes. You know, loot boxes was the first innovative thing. Then the whole gotcha thing took off, and now you have live services on mobile. Mobile phones got more powerful, so you could actually play better looking games on a phone, you know? Like, so... And it just kind of snowballed from from there. And I think the MOBA genre, like League of Legends and uh, Heroes of New Earth, and which actually has an even more toxic community than League of Legends. And then, uh, obviously, Dota was the original. You know, the Frozen Throne custom map is what started all of that. And then Dota 2. And the MOBA scene, I think, was very, very popular for a long time. I mean, it's still pretty popular now. But that one, I feel like, first, there was MMOs. And people would criticize the predatory uh, monetary spending of the subscription fee. Then there was MOBAs. And MOBAs came out, and I feel like MOBAs stole a lot of people away from MMOs. Because MOBAs were very community, like you had your team, you know, it was competitive, and they were free to play, 
mostly, but then obviously, you know, all the characters were kept added and the skins and all this other stuff. So then they, they introduced the recurring revenue aspect that way. I mean, now a lot of games have battle passes, you know, season pass, battle pass. Like every game, every live service game has to have their battle pass. So, and you got all the FOMO with the battle pass. So, and the timed events, you know, the seasonal events, it's like they ne it never ends. So, uh, that, that that is why gaming today is very different from gaming, like, even just 15 years ago. If I think 20 years ago, right, like, 20 years ago would have been, like, 2004. 20 years ago was when, like, World of Warcraft was on the cusp of being the next best thing. Think about that. So 20 years ago, I guess, gaming was still... There was no loot boxes. There was no live service. Uh, there was no predatory marketing and subscription fees and stuff. But that was all about to start because World of Warcraft came out, like, 20 years ago. RuneScape was the same way. Forza has FOMO, weekly new cards. See? Yeah... Oh, man. Yeah. That's what it's become. That's what it's turned into. I have to give Final Fantasy XIV credit, though, because not a lot of people play subscription-based MMOs, but theirs is actually still really good, and they don't have a lot of, like, FOMO stuff. Like, the game does have an in-game cash shop, but the only thing that they sell in the cash shop are things that you missed out on. Like if you weren't playing the game and you missed out on like a seasonal event, you can buy the items in the shop. And it's permanently there. It's not like it's a FOMO thing where it's like, oh, if you don't, if you, it says it's here for like three weeks. And if you don't buy it now, it's gone forever. They, they don't do that. So I have to give them props. It's like, yeah, it's kind of lame that they have an in-game shop. That you have to pay real money if you want to buy stuff that you missed out on. But at least if you really, really want that stuff, it's there. And it's not really that expensive. It's not like buying uh it's not like buying skins in League of Legends. Like League of Legends is like way more expensive. So um It's amazing how people were bashing on Dragon's Dogma 2 for the microtransactions. Dragon's Dogma 2's microtransactions are so insignificant that it isn't even like it isn't even comparable to a live service game's microtransactions. So <laughs> like there's literally no FOMO in, in Dragon's Dogma. All right, let's see where are we at on here. Thirty six minutes, so I'm gonna have to probably gonna have to do something else while waiting. I don't know, what do you guys think? Like, for those of you that remember the different console generations, what was your favorite console generation? Which Because that would typically determine what era of gaming you consider was the best one. Like, was it the seventh generation, which was the PS3 and the Xbox 360? Was it the sixth generation? Was it the eighth generation? Etc. Like, which one do you guys think? So... Here, let us go into uh, live. <laughs> Speaking of live service games, uh, here, here's a live service game. <laughs> Speaking of live service games, I go and load up a live service game. The first, the first generation, Wiggly New Cars, PS2. Oh, PS2. Yeah, that one was very good. I'm not gonna lie. That one was good. That's not my favorite one, but that was definitely a really good one. 
first the first generation because pong goes hard yeah the the first generation the first generation i i would say the first second third and f oh well actually even all the way through the sixth generation i think gaming game developers were very creative there was a lack of standards like now when you play an action game or an action adventure game like tomb raider or uh, uncharted or any game like really like okay think of it like this horizon uh uncharted tomb raider and probably a bunch of other ones that i can't think of right now all of them climb walls the same exact way all of them have the exact same control scheme even though they're all developed by different development teams and it's like there's a standard way to climb on walls in games you know what i mean look for the yellow or the white marking on the wall to to jump from one ledge to the next like in the ps2 era that was not a standard thing so it's like if you played one action adventure game and then you went to go play another one like the control schemes might have been completely different so some people might say that's a bad thing and it's better to have standardization for in terms of control scheme but i think that it's good and it's bad because if all of them are the same you somehow feel like you're playing the exact same game because i noticed that i noticed like playing horizon forbidden west almost felt like i was playing tomb raider but not exactly because they at least they change the enemies enough where in Tomb Raider, you're not really fighting giant mechs all the time. Whereas in Horizon, you are. So because the enemies are different, it doesn't feel like I'm playing the same game. But if you're platforming, it's almost always the same. But Uncharted, like uh, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3, those games play and feel a lot like Tomb Raider. Like the modern Tomb Raider games. So... I don't know. I, I like when game... When there's innovative approaches to game control schemes but sometimes it's like if someone goes the really weird i'll give you guys an example like resident evil the first resident evil games all had different controls up to up through like resident evil 5 then once they got to let resident evil 6 they sort of standardized the controls because 6 7 8 and like all the remakes they all control pretty much the same but before that like 5 had the co-op and and like the camera was weird in terms of the analog stick control uh, if you're playing it on console 4 was over the shoulder then the first few were fixed camera so it, you know you know what i mean you don't mind at all when the games use similar mechanics yeah i don't really mind it but i feel like sometimes it's cool to see a developer's approach to doing things differently. Yellow yeah, stuff is taking over climbing. I just realized I have like the audio off in this game. Developers took too many risks back then. This is a double-edged sword. Yeah, the other thing too though is you gotta remember like the budget for making games now is so much higher than what it was. Or like the amount of money it costs to make a game now is so much higher than what it was in the past. Like, From Software Combat and later Lies of P Combat. Lies of P controls kind of like the Souls games, but not exactly. It is very similar, though. You're, you have a point. But, like, uh, I'll give you guys an example of a, of a game company that does their own control scheme. And despite whatever's popular at the time, they stick to their own way of doing things. That's Team Ninja. Team Ninja is the guys who made Neo and uh, recently Rise of the Ronin. 
and Wolong Fallen Dynasty and Stranger of Paradise, they do their own control schemes. So, like, people consider it a Souls-like, but it doesn't control anything, like, from software. Like, the controls for jumping and attacking are completely different from the From Software games. And they... So... I, I wonder sometimes if Team Ninja gets irritated when they hear people referring to their game as a Souls-like game because they've been doing action games, like really challenging action games, way longer. Like, the original Ninja Gaiden games were very, very hard. Uh, and their modern games, like Neo and Rise of the Ronin, those games control a lot more like Ninja Gaiden. Their original game, which is older than the Dark Souls games. Oh, the parrying thing. Felt like an evolution. The entry barrier for game development is really low now, though. Pretty much anyone with a mid-range PC and enough willpower can make a game. Yeah. And I feel like people who play games on PC and they don't play on console or they don't play on mobile, I feel like they have the wrong... There, there's like this... There's They're missing the big picture. Because oftentimes when I talk with people who play on PC, they often talk about graphics, like the high fidelity visuals, visual quality, frame rate, uh, things like ray tracing upscalers all that kind of stuff frame generation you know like all the stuff that's synonymous with pc gaming they put a lot of emphasis on that but i feel like anyone with a random mid-range pc can make a game that statement makes a lot of sense but it also implies that you don't need to make a game have really high fidelity visuals to be a really good game like you you I feel like it's better to experiment and innovate where it counts with gameplay. Like, is the game actually fun? You know, like, is the game compelling? Like, does it make you want to play the game? A game can have really, really good graphics, but if it's so hard to run that only people with, you know, the highest end GPUs can play the game, What's the point? And, and, and that assumes that it's decently enjoyable enough to actually play. The other thing, too, is you can also leverage, like, AI. Like, if you're going to code the game, you can ask the AI to basically write a lot of the code now. I feel like AAA studios are too bloated, focused, focusing too much on graphics and cinematics as opposed to gameplay. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2, but for CPU, same thing. What do you mean Dragon's Dogma 2? Like, what does that have to do with the... Well, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a AAA game. Like, supposedly that guy at Capcom was working on that game for, like, more than 10 years. or so Something like that. You know, that's how the story goes. He's, like, working on the game for, like, 10 years. You know, that's not gonna be a B-tier game if you were working on it for 10 years hard to run for most people because of cpu yeah but if their cpu is like five years old or newer i think it's fine the only problem is when you go to vernworth and uh uh back patal that's the only place where it's a problem here let me actually do something in here instead of just standing around but yeah limiting the amount of people that can play it uh, I don't know about that. I mean, sort of, yes and no. The fact that it runs on console... Like, basically, if you have a Zen 2 CPU, you can play Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, it's not... It's not gonna be, like, 60 FPS all the time. But it's playable. You know what I mean? Like, the thing is, technically, it's playable. So, even if you can't get 60 FPS... As long as it's not like 10 FPS, and we already know like Zen 2, I, I mean, I did a video about it. Like it runs about thir anywhere from like 30, low 30s to upper 40s is like Zen 2 performance in the city. 
So it's not terrible. I mean, it could be better, obviously, but it's not, like, unplayable. I don't consider that unplayable. I consider sub-30 FPS unplayable. Like, to me, if it's... If it's between 30 and 60, I consider that playable. 60 and above is 100% playable. Like, it isn't even a problem. So, you think 60 minimum is minimum for PC game? Yeah, but see, I don't think you have the... That is that is more of, like, a minority opinion uh, in the PC gaming space. Because I've even heard, like, people... People who play on PC that uh, are like, editors for IGN and GameSpot, I mean, they've gone on record saying that, yeah, like, 60, 60 FPS is good, but it's not like it's gonna make or break the, the experience. Like, if they have to... If they can only do... Wait, why is Kafka here? If they can only do... 45 FPS... If the game is really... Wait, why are... What? Why is Blade inside there? What? For you, it's 120? My personal minimum is like, well, I guess 60 FPS, really. Like, um, mm, I, even if it goes below 60, I don't really care too much. Like, the, it depends on the game, though. See, it really depends on the type of game. Because if I'm playing a competitive game, then yeah, I don't want it to be below 60. 60 would be the minimum. But if I'm playing World of War... Not, well, not World of Warcraft. Like, any MMO. Like, if I'm playing Final Fantasy, uh, 60 FPS is enough. Like, I don't really care. It doesn't need to be above 60, as far as I'm concerned. Like, it could be, but I don't really need it to be above 60. Because most of the time, think about it like this. If you're sitting here watching cinematics, watching character dialogue like this, like, do I really need the frame rate in this scene to be 120 FPS? Like, is that really going to change the scene in any noticeable way? No, it's not. <laughs> like, is it going to increase the power consumption of my PC? Yes. <laughs> You were playing Forza at 90 and hated the experience, went back to 200 plus. Today you played an old... An old, an old game that switches between 30 and 60. A lot of games like Dragon's Dogma 2 do that. Like... I don't know what it is, but there's a lot of games that have come out recently that the cutscenes will drop to 30 FPS. Like, the gameplay will be 60 FPS as the target frame rate, but then in cutscenes, they'll drop all the way to 60 FPS. I don't know why they do that. And these are modern, new games that do this. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth does that. Like, if you're playing it in performance mode, where it targets 60 FPS, as soon as a cutscene like this starts playing, it drops to 30 during the cutscene. And uh, all the Team Ninja games do that. Like, Rise of the Ronin does that. It's it's 60 when you're playing the game. As soon as a cutscene comes up, it, dip, it drops down to 30 FPS. It caps it to 30. I don't really know why they do that. Like, the cinematic experience... I don't understand it. I personally don't understand why they make the cutscenes play at 30 frames per second. Because it's not like they're pre-rendered cutscenes. They're in-game engine rendered scenes. Even on mobile, you play RuneScape at 90. Man, I don't even know these people were here. I just randomly ran into these two. Clear out the enemies roaming nearby. I'm supposed to kill this guy? Am I supposed to clear this guy out? I don't even know what that means. 
Where is this? I don't even know where that is. Even on mobile, the like RuneScape at 90. Like, how RuneScape is such an old game. Like, how does it, uh... What's it like playing that at 90 FPS? I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to 60. I mean, I yeah, I'll play at 120 FPS. I'm not saying that I don't play at high frame rates. I do, but, uh... Like, a lot of the games that I play... They don't support high frame rates because the developers tie the game to the frame rate. It's it's weird. Like, it's usually a lot of Japanese games are like that. I don't know why. I don't know why they make their games that way. Maybe it's because they were designed for console and console was never really designed to run above 60. In fact, it was only the PlayStation 4 Pro... Which is what started the idea of running an uncapped frame rate with a target of 60. Before that, like games, a lot of games were 30 FPS experiences, on PS4 especially. There were only a few exceptions first person shooters and fighting games. <laughs> Oh, it's at 240 on the main. The problem for me is I don't even have a 240 display. So if I were to... If I were to play my games at 240 FPS, I would have, like, screen tearing everywhere. It would look terrible. Oh, the music started playing, guys. The music started playing. Hold up. Let's go back to the, uh, the live stream. What happened to the chat? Why did their chat disappear? Anyway. It says one of two. Are they doing two 14 hour broadcasts? They're doing a 28 hour live stream? I don't get it. The 241, 480 LG would be near end game display. Is that a uh, 1080p monitor though? Like if it's 1080p, I'm not gonna get it. Now you're making me want like a 480 hertz display, but if it's 1080, I'm not getting it. 2160p, 240 hertz. Now that's more like it. Wait, so when when you do a 1080p. Does it have letterboxing? Like, does it have the black bars on the side and the 1080p is like this small little thing in the middle? Wait, what is the what is the name of the monitor? Like, what's the model, model number? I'm gonna look it up now. What is this called? I don't know what happened to the chat on here. It just like got messed up. All right, let's see what these guys are going to do. Thirty two GS nine five U E B. Wow, that's expensive. This is more expensive than a... Than a, um... I was gonna say, it's more expensive than... An XTX, but it's... It's not as expensive as a 4090. Wow. 
So wait a minute, this is... 4K up to 240 Hz. Man, it's an OLED too. Like, what's the size? Oh, it's a 32 inch. I don't know. For me, 32 inch is so big. Like, I'd have to think about. I wish, I wish there was like a a 28 or a 29 inch monitor. I feel like 27 is okay, but why hasn't anybody made like a 29 inch monitor? You know what I'm saying? Because 32 inches is not terrible, but because 32 inches is so big, like, I don't know how I would fit my other two monitors on my desk. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I would have, uh, like, three displays. I mean, how is that supposed to work? I wish that someone would try to experiment, make like a 29 inch monitor 4K. I personally like 27 inch 4K, but I know a lot of people say that that's too small for them. To me, I think that's the perfect, I mean, it's not the perfect size. Technically it's not like for 2020 vision, the perfect size for 4K is actually 30 inches. 30 to 32 inches. So the 32 inch size on this display is actually ideal, almost ideal. It's a little bit on the large size. Buy a 32 inch desk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would need I would need to buy like monitor arms if I was going to do that. Like I'd rather not use monitor arms. I mean, you guys have seen, I don't know if you guys saw my setup video, but it's like, it sh my, the, I did a video a few months ago called My Setup, and it shows the way, like, I use the PCs. So. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess, hold on, let me, uh, let's go back to this real quick. I guess let's, let me just use up the stuff and get these things. Oh, what do I actually need to get? I guess I'm just going to get some of these. Are all your PCs in the same room? No, they're not. No. I've only got two PCs in the same room. So, I've got the PC that I'm using right now. And I have the PC that I normally use for live streams. So, you guys know the PC that I use for the weekly live show every Thursdays? That PC is in this room. And this one is literally in the same room. All the other PCs that you guys hear me talk about, like a Threadripper, all the other stuff, those are in, like, a different place. Like, they aren't... Well, okay, one of them is here, but the rest of them are, like, in a different place. Like, I don't have... When I say I have an 11700K and a 5800X, I do, but those aren't, like... I don't have instant access to those. Those are in a different location. So, it's like, I can't instantly use those PCs, so to speak. Well, let's do one more and then we'll do the other on the other one. Yeah, but this game... Star Rail is probably like the only live service game that I play. If I didn't play this, I might actually be playing Helldivers 2. But for those wondering, I quit Genshin Impact. Like, I haven't played Genshin Impact in... Two, three months? It's been a while. I was thinking of logging back into Genshin Impact to see, like, what's happened with the game. In fact, I might actually have to log into Genshin Impact. 
<laughs> I might have to launch it. Oh boy, we have to go to the Genshin Impact because I just realized something. There's Genshin Impact Redemption codes for April. Yeah, I gotta log into Genshin Impact. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I might actually be too late though. Like, when does it expire? Hold on, we gotta... No. Alright, well... Oh, not that one. Here's this. Like, there's, there's Genshin Impact codes, guys. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna have to get back into Genshin Impact. Of course, I have to download an update. So that's probably not gonna happen. Never mind. Yeah, but it's, there's only two PCs, really, that I use that are in this room. So it's it's the the X3D, this one, which is the one I'm using right now, and the other one is the non X3D. And th this one, the one that has the X3D, is the one that has the RTX 4090. So so this is the computer that has the RTX 4090. So all these benchmark results that you saw earlier these these are score this is basically 4090 and 7950x3d performance right here but yeah like if i'm benchmarking well, I've kind of changed my setup. Like, I used to use this PC as the benchmarking station, if that makes any sense. So, for example, like, if I was going to review a graphics card, like, when I reviewed the 7800 XT, I used this PC to do that review, and all the data was collected from this computer. So, it's like, I would test... With the 7800 XT, I would I would remove that GPU. I would test with a different GPU. I remove that GPU. I test with another GPU. But this was the PC that I used for testing graphics cards. Uh, I have recently changed to a different setup for that. I've actually switched over to the 7800 X3D. So the PC that you guys saw me do back in December, because I I did two live stream builds. I did Threadripper. And then I did 7800X3D. 7800X3D is the one that I uh, use as the test setup now. And the reason why I did that is because I don't want to always remove the 4090. Because the GPU has a limited number of disconnect cycles for the power cable. And I don't want to keep unplugging the 4090 again and again. Because I don't want to risk my card uh, melting the connector. Due to too many disconnect cycles for having to benchmark different GPUs. So that's the reason why I kind of change it. I changed the setup. And that's why I rarely will do content with this PC anymore. So it, it's kind of weird. I, I don't know. Things are things will change later this year when Zen 5 comes out. Although I don't really know in what capacity I'm going to change my setup. What I could see happening is if Zen 5 is significantly faster than the 7950X3D or the 7800X3D at gaming, I will use Zen 5 as the benchmark PC, and I will probably use one of the X3D CPUs for live streaming, or I will use... Uh, or, or the other way around. Like, I might use Zen 5 for live streaming um, and swap in the Gigabyte Aorus Master, so... Battle Mage will be your main platform. Uh, it depends. It could. It could become my main platform. 
Because you gotta remember, like, I don't need... So my main PC doesn't need to have the most powerful specs because the benchmark PC is what needs to have the most powerful specs. Like, the live stream PC, which is what I consider my main PC, like, that one, it doesn't have to be the most powerful computer because if all I'm doing is live streaming and talking to viewers for a few hours, you know, like, why do I need a super high-end computer to do that? You know, the reality is I don't. So, yeah, Battle Mage could easily become my main PC. I do plan to switch to it. I, w I want to do one of those 30-day, I switched to Battle Mage for 30 days, you know, like that kind of thing. I want. I expect to do that sort of content. So it will become my daily driver PC for a while. In fact, right now, I use the Intel A770 as my daily driver in my Threadripper setup. So, uh, I've been using the Intel GPU with my AMD Threadripper for pretty much the whole year, and it's worked fine. But I'm, I don't use it to render games, though. So, like, just to give you guys an idea, um, how should I do this? Hold on, where is, um, where are we at on the live stream? Let's go check this live stream. Okay, yeah, it's still... We've got music playing. Is this music gonna get me demonetized, though? They're playing Endwalker soundtrack, I think. Yeah, this is Endwalker music. They're playing like a remixed version of one of the end so end games or end area songs. I need to move you guys probably over here because every time I switch over to the live stream, it's like I can't see the chat until I move you guys over. Should start soon. They say 14 hour broadcast, but watch like six hours of it just be this screen. <laughs> like, we just do this for like six hours. <laughs> oh, well, what I wanted to show here. Um, here, where's paint? It's kind of weird how it like the video disappears when I switch to a different window. So you guys know, like, Threadripper, like, if this is my Threadripper PC, the Intel GPU, okay, the PSU is, like, down here, right? That's the, the power supply. The Intel GPU, A770, is, like, here. And the, then I've got a capture card right here, which I recently took out, because I can use an external one. I got a capture card, then I have AMD's GPU, the A7, or the XTX. The XTX reference card is here. And then I've got the uh, NVMe, NVMe card for four M.2 drives in the top slot right here. So something like that. And then the threader per CPU itself is, is like the socket is here. And you've got memory, you got one dim, another dim, you got, you got four memory dims above and below the CPU. So I don't know how I drew that, I failed on that drawing, but you guys get the idea. This is my third of our PC. So we have XTX, that font is way too big, but I don't care. You guys get the idea. And this is A770. 
I don't know why that one turned out fine, but this one turned out too big. Anyway, so that is the PC. So, what I've done is my monitors are connected to the Intel GPU. So I got one, two, three monitors, all connected to the Intel graphics card. But, the way I've set it up, and this is cool about Windows 11, this is one of the things that make Windows 11 better than Windows 10, as far as I'm concerned. Windows 11 lets you specify on a per application or a global basis which GPU do you want your applications to use. And I just globally set it to the XTX. So that... Oh, that's starting. Hi, Derin. Hi, Derin and Zodiac. Okay, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I wasn't expecting this. I was not expecting this. I wasn't expecting him to look like that. <laughs> He's Heidelin and Zodiac, Zodiac combined. <laughs> Look at the teeth for uh, Zodiac. え、ということで、あの、この後今日何が起こるかというランドリーごと<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> How come he didn't dress up? He said that he's it's scary. <laughs> いやいやいや、始まりました。14時間ですよ。おや、おやおや。なんかさ、一応10周年。はい、10周年。終了時間生放送じゃない<笑><笑><笑> いや、渡り合える。うん。でもね、正解に行かれた小田石の皆さん、こっち。すごい絶望してると思うんだよね、今。その、もしくはハイデンさん。あ、こっち。そうそうそう。私こんなだったかしらっていう。いや、うん。と
いやいやでもあれですね、うん、そのうちの会社って会社の社員の人スタッフの人も非課せめっちゃいるじゃないですか、うん、いるねで<笑>ちょっとっててまあ、what was Yoshi P doing with the whatever he was trying to put over him? Cosplay was so much easier to get to the other side. <laughs> what was he doing with that thing though? Like, why was he trying to wear whatever he was trying to put on? And he just gave up. <laughs> It's like, he just gave up because of the green screen. <laughs> I like how he just gave up and just like got rid of it. It was like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I like how whoever's the camera person, they keep zooming in on this guy's face. X のトレンドにだけ入ってほしくない。そうですね。うん、ゾディーデリンでは入らない方がいいでしょう。うん、アップやめって。<笑><笑>はいはいはい。そう目を開けてた方がいいのか、こう閉じた方がいい。あのね、閉じても、はい、なぜかハイデリンが目開いてるように見えるんですよ。目書かれてるせい。そうですね、書かれてます。結果。そうピカスすごいんだよマジで。すごい。いやあるよねこういう確か。アップやめてこっち見ないでって感じで見てないんだ。見てない。そうそう見てるつもりはなそうない。ない。はい。はい。ということでよろしくお願いします。はい。であの例年ですとここであの我々毎年社長にあそうですお呼びしてたんですけど、はい、今年はですねちょっと社長があまりにも。I went back in the Genshin while they were talking. It took so long to download that update. 出たいって話をしたんですけど。あのーまあ、4月って大変期で、いろいろ対外的な発表もこの後していかなきゃいけないものがあって、ちょっと黙ってるみたいな、<笑>その会社的な空気,空気としては。そうなんですよ、はい、そうなんですよ、そうなんですよ、われわれ、そういう知識ゼロだからさ、<笑>今までたまたま外してたって、広報からさ、え四4月に生放送に社長を出すとか、何言ってんですかみたいな。<笑><笑>社会の仕組み分かってますぐらいに。うち株式会社ですよ。ね。で、あ、yeah this is gonna be like I don't I don't know if we're gonna do the full fourteen hours。まあちょっとさすがにっていう。そうなんですよ。はい。取締役いいんです別に。はい。そうですね。いいのからまあいいんです。昨日たまたまキルさんと打ち合わせ。I haven't logged into Genshin in so long。どこを見るのがいいですか。Well let's just go to Genshin while they're talking。Like so I haven't been in this game in so long。I'm just checking to see. So they don't have. Okay, so I already have both of these characters. So I haven't really missed out on anything, really. I still have like a bunch of Primo gems saved up and wishes and things. So. Okay, so basically, by me not playing, it doesn't really change anything. There's nothing, nothing new. Really. So, okay. Back to the main attraction. はい、ということで、えー、進めてまいりたいと思いますが、はい、今日は一緒に放送を一緒に進めていただく皆さん開発運営チームの皆さん何人かに来ていただいてますのでその皆さんにお入りいただいてご挨拶させていただきたいと思いますので、はい、皆さんどうぞお入りください。じゃあまずはオープニングこのメンバーでお送りしたいと思いますので、はい、まずは皆さん一言ずつ自己紹介と簡単にご挨拶いただきたいですいませんちょっとスノガちゃんですいませんね。Hold on, let's see if we can get the chat here. お願いします。はいえー、リードアーティストの一田です。よろしくお願いします。えー、ます<笑>今日はサブ放送の TRPG を遊んでみようってコーナーに参加しますのでよ,よろしくお願いします。はい、まあ初心者で。Uh, all I want to get from this is I want to see. I want to see if they're going to show the benchmark or at least the job trailer. 
やれるんだっていうところをねちょっと、はい、あと爪痕をしっかりいやー<笑>もう10年残せてないんで,<笑><笑>でまあ今年こそはちょっと狙っていきたいと思います、はいはい、お願いしますはいよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますでは続いて松沢さんお願いしますはいリードプロジェクトマネージャーの松沢です今日は仕事を忘れて、えー、皆さんと一緒に楽しみたいと思いますよろしくお願いしますお忘れられるのか<笑>まあ、まあ、これが仕事じゃなければですよね<笑>よろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますでは続いて林さんお願いしますはい、えー、14時間放送大好きリードアイテムデザイナーの林です<笑>、えー、今日はよろしくお願いします So, just like with all their other live streams, they're going to go through all their introductions and introduce who everybody does. So, the, dude, the guy in the red hoodie is the lead item designer. It's interesting how.、Uh, I forget his name, but the guy who's dressed up as h y d e l i n and Zodiac combined.、Uh, I wasn't expecting him to do that. Because he was literally in the video from earlier today. と言いつつ、と言いつつ、さっき俺スタジオ入りしたときに、はい、あの途中を見たんですけど、はいはいはいはい、そ俺と林、うん、え今年これ何？そんなかぶってるかもなくて,<笑>途,途,中くて途中までは一時本当に分からなくて、ああ、he helped him with the costume。とりあえず待ったつといえばみたいな。<笑>ああ確かに確かにそうそうナルザルもいいな。そうそう分からなかったんですよ。<笑>ゴージャスかな。ここね。つ<笑>い<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>。いやでもね。いろいろ装着したらちゃんとなった。素晴らしい。もう途中ジャガー酸味が出てきて大変だったんですよ。そうね。<笑>あ、一番の。<笑>そうそうそう。<笑>よろしくお願い,いします。はい、よろしくお願いいたします。ますはい。そして、えー、武田さんお願いします。はい、コミュニティチームの武田です。どうぞよろしくお願いいたします。イエーイ。自分もこの会場に来てから上司のね、あの<笑>クリーチャー味を見てからずっと心が。<笑>ザワザワしてて怖いんですよね。今なんかまだ心臓がドキドキしてて。えそれは何？次俺に振ってくるって。<笑><笑>そんな上司にはもうさせられない。I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think the costume's that scary looking. ただただその上司がこんなに体張ってるんだから自分も頑張らなきゃっていう気持ちにはなるなと思う。自分がやりたいって気持ちは今全く怖い。はい。そこだけ。I can see how it could scare small children. Kind of like a clown. They keep saying. That the costume is like very sh shocking to look at and scary. Well, I don't think he's that scary looking, but I can see how small children would probably start crying if they saw him like that. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he agreed to do it is scary. Because, <laughs> can you imagine? He's going to be like dressed up like that for 14 hours. It, the, the whole live stream is like 14 hours. But the fact that he. Think of how long it took to do the makeup, the face paint, all that stuff, and then like piece the whole costume together. The only, it's funny because the only end game content that I did in N Walker was the EX Primal or the EX Trials, which was basically the. So Hydaelyn in white and Zodiac in in dark, like those are the two like end game.、Uh, Extreme fights you can do. I did those, and then I did the first tier of the raid, and then I quit the game. That, that's literally all I did for N Walker's post game content. So I have no idea like what the post story, the aftermath or epilogue story of N Walker consists of. Like when I have to go back to playing the game before the expansion comes out, I'm gonna have to go through all of that content that I haven't experienced yet. とことが決まって、うん、新キャラだって言ってアルフィノのラフスケ名前さんのラフスケッチを紹介するときに一緒に出させてもらったり<笑>テスト放送出てるのその前にあそうだ
そうねなんか素見と時代のシルエットを着てそうシポシポもしてたしなんか<laughs> yeah, they're, they're basically saying that、uh, the Primals, which is the band, like they also dressed up. Not extreme like this guy, but when they do the concert thing, they're dressed up because they typically wear suits. They typically dress like they're men in black from the movie franchise with fedora hats. バリバリ出したんですよ。出してる出してた。ああ、昔はそうですかね。うん。ね。まあ、こう確認とかもしないもんね。してないですね。今もしてないけど。僕は成長の見られる。そうだ。それであの開発中の皆さんの中ではハ
<laughs> Almost two months from release, so it's getting close, though. No, it's, it's like two and a half months, isn't it? Yeah, we're still a ways off from the actual expansion. まあ、まあ、はい。ということでよろしくお願いします。はい。え、続いて it's going to be a lot of sitting around listening to them talk for a long time. There is going to be a concert thing with the Primals. Or they're going to do something with Soken and those guys. Is what he was saying. I was trying to read the thing earlier. そしてその次です。19時半から吉ピーさんポを はい。はい、で、あの、カチムの皆さんにはゲストに入っていただいてですね、ほら、その当時の加減加減言ってる。あの、加減でやってったらね、終わんないからマジで。終わんないから。そうそうそう。で、その当時のね、思い出なんかを
よく分かんない方からもうね、PRPG 慣れてて、この14はどんなんだろうっていうのを見てみようという方もいるでしょうし、うん、全然やったことないんだよねっていう方は、うん、実はこの中も PRPG やったことない方いらっしゃいますよね。ほぼやったことないそうですよねほぼほぼの方がその実際どう遊ぶのっていうのをご説明しながらあのどう遊べばいいかとセットでご覧いただけますのでしかもなんか途中でメンバー交代したりするんでしょうしないう今回はそのままでジョブチェンジをします、はい、あジョブチェンジをする、はい、ほうほう14らしくほうほうほうって聞いてもさほらジョブチェンジとはみたいなことは見ていただければかります<笑>しかも結構愚痴ったり日は日はったりしながらやるんでしょうどうせ<笑>いろんなことができるそうだよね<笑>、はい、まあな,なのでまあ居酒屋パートワンみたいなね,ね、はい、お酒は飲めないですけどまだ<笑>はい南西長丁場ですからね<笑>、うん、皆さんまあ本当水分取りながら頑張っていただければ、はい、ありがとうございます。はい、というのはそんな感じで、えー、本日の14時間生放送をお送りしていきますので皆様もごゆるりとお付き合いいただければと思いますので、うん、どうぞよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いします,しますはい、それではオープニングの締めに最後から吉田さんに開会宣言的なものをいただきまして、えーはい、次に進みたいと思いますのでよろしくお願いいたします、えー、申請してから10周年ということですね9回9回目14時間生放送回9回目ですはい、あのー、まさかですね最初の周年記念放送で、まあ、14だから14時間でいいんじゃないみたいなことを言ったのが、okay. こんなに続くとは思ってなかったんですけど、えー、年一、まあ、年一ね最近、okay, so、やれなくギリギリ、so、going to be talking about あれですけど何やかんや9回ですから10分の9はやってます、まあまあまあ、そうね<笑>、まあ、楽しみにしていこうと思いますんで、okay. ぜひあと堅苦しい放送じゃないので本当にあのずっこけたりとかこんな格好したりとかあの体が消えたりとかいろいろすると思いますけど<笑>あのゆるく14時間楽しんでいこうと思いますのでどうぞ最後までお付き合いくださいよろしくお願いしますありがとうございます、えー、それでは以上でオープニングコーナー終了とさせていただいて本放送こちらの放送の方はこの後13時から第80第80回<笑>ファイナルファンタジー14プロデュースされたライブをお送りいたします<笑>そしてサブ放送の方はこの後すぐですね5分後、えー、12時半頃から、えー、PRPG をゆるって遊んでみようの回をえー、お送りいたしますのでどうぞお付き合いください、はい、それでは一旦失礼しますはい、oh, he's actually going to do、uh, that's interesting so I wasn't sure what they were going to do here but he's going to be joining he's going to go in the game and do some alliance raids with our developers that show some behind the scenes stories with designing them interesting that actually sounds pretty interesting like this section right here Although, I don't think we're gonna be live for that. That's like super late. And then the round table's supposed to be like this. So, was this. Is this like pre. No, this is a live stream, but it just seems like it's. It's pre scripted or something? I don't know. Like, why are they showing this? Is this from like the old one? Oh, they are making a tabletop, or they're releasing a tabletop game. Final Fantasy XIV Tabletop RPG. So they're doing that. Hmm. Interesting. That's the very last thing that they're doing. That's a secondary broadcast. That is like literally almost 12 hours from now. Like, this is insane. Like, that's long. But I feel like it's. They say 14 hours, but so much of it is basically this. It's a lot of this. That's what it seems like to me. Like, they have, they have segments where they're live, and then they talk for a while, and then it just goes back to this for a while. So, I don't know. It's... I haven't really kept up with the game recently, so I'm not... I'm, I'm sort of out of the loop in terms of N. Walker's content. Because I stopped playing the game in February of 2022... Or maybe it was January. It was basically before Elden Ring came out, was when I stopped playing Final Fantasy XIV. I haven't really gone back since. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm probably not the best resource for this. 
So it says 12.30, right? That's going to be... That's their time. That's, what, 12.30 in the afternoon? So that's like... Isn't that like two minutes from now? They got a lot of people watching this. 40,000 people. Does Blizzard do stuff like this? Does Do any developers do stuff like this? Where they engage with the community via this type of format? Although this isn't really directly engaging with people online. It's more... I think you have to send them the questions via Twitter or something. And they might choose to answer the question or whatever. Path of Exile does this? That's interesting. Oh yeah, Path of Exile is a game that was pretty popular when it came out. That was that Korean game, right? Oh no, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of Lost Ark or something like that. Path of Exile is the Diablo clone, isn't it? No, it's New Zealand. Wow. It's the one that has the red orb, right? The red and the blue orb? Or is red and blue orb the Diablo and red orb is the Path of Exile? I forget. I've seen gameplay of it. This should be starting real soon. Or unless this is... Wait, what's it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there, yeah, 1230. Okay. Final Fantasy XIV TRPG I assume the audio is okay. Okay, they're too loud. I need to turn down one of the microphones. Okay, this is actually pretty interesting because you get to see like the behind the scenes, the developers of the game. I didn't know that Path of Exile did live streams, though. That's interesting. The development team does it. Because these guys are the only ones that I know of that do this. Like, I don't know of any other developer that does this level of community engagement. Okay, so th this is uh basically what they're doing is they're basically answering questions about is he read? Oh, he's reading that off of his phone. He's literally just reading that stuff off of his phone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
この間本当に一回だけそれこそ伊藤さんに教えてもらったのをプレイしたっていうだけでほぼほぼ初心者なので、えー、初めてのね人も多分見てると思うんで、うん、一緒に学びながら楽しめたらなと思ってますよろしくお願いしますはいよろしくお願いします,しします、はいえー、リードアーティストの一田ですよろしくお願いします全くの初心者なので、まあ、皆さんと一緒にこういろんな知識を、ね、得てプレイできるようになったらなと思います。よろしくお願いします。I want to know what they all like, what are their main jobs in the game? はい。ま、最初ね、あのオープニングの挨拶でいいか、一番緊張するのは。わかる。それはそうですよね。フリートークってやつですよね。まずこっちサブなんで。他もちょっといいとか。はい。やりましょう。お願いします。すごい。コメ
あのその頃って自分のそのキャラクターを自分でこう書くっていうのが結構ね流行ってたんだけど俺マジで絵下手なのねで思い描いてるかっこいいキャラクターが描けなくてそこで一回ここ This guy's telling a pretty interesting story When, when he was in middle school, that guy was telling a story. When he was in middle school, he. He basically wrote this. The, he kind of wrote like a script of like the coolest character that he could think of that he wished could be like in a video game. I think what they're talking about, I didn't catch what the other guy was saying, but in general, they're basically introducing themselves again, their role in developing the game, and they're talking about the table, their experience with tabletop games, typically like Dungeons and Dragons, those type of games, and kind of their vision of what they wanted to bring to the table in designing this tabletop game for Final Fantasy XIV. But that guy was saying something interesting, like he, since middle school, he was into this type of stuff, which I think that makes him kind of the youngest one, or I guess like the longest one in terms of tabletop. So Final Fantasy XIV's tabletop RPG or table RPG? Yeah, I don't know what that second one says. I can't read that. It's like big words. They're using big words, big vocabulary. I don't know. で、今回遊ぶあのお話の範囲は新生からま相手あたりのま要素が出てくるよっていうことで見ていただければと思います。ま特に多分新生の部分がかなり濃いと思いますんで、はい。まあのフリートらしかまだそんなことないとか、最近
楽しみにしてくださっている方もいるだろう商品の内容は絶対やらないのでネタバレとかないでご安心ください、うん、今回の今日やるやつは今日だけのやつそうそうそうそう,そう,そう,そう,そういうことでございます、はい、You never played t a b l e t o p お願いしますはい That's the reason why Baldur's Gate 3 I don't know Did they make this because Baldur's Gate 3 was so popular last year? I don't know、うん、あるねはいはいはい我々も今回大きな冒険の区切りのタイミングでちょっとこの6人の中で I think they were saying I couldn't really catch what they were saying at the very beginning of this but I think they were kind of talking about the motivation for why they decided to make a tabletop RPG part of it was like the lack of human interaction these days everybody's all on the computer all the time everyone's remote working all the time So it's, it's like it's a way for them to re engage with. Like, it's, it's a way for not just them, but like people to play the game in person and, in, and enjoying the experience like in real time, like rather than just, you know, staring at a computer screen the whole time. Which is kind of weird to say that because it's. it's Think about it, like these guys want you to play Final Fantasy XIV, but at the same time, they're kind of critiquing their own game. Like, they're critiquing the fact that Final Fantasy XIV is literally people staring at a computer screen playing a game for hours on end. So, in interesting, like, you know, interesting、uh, thing to say as a developer of the game. <laughs> I thought this section was gonna happen later, though. I thought, I thought this part was gonna take place like five hours from now, after the primals section. So I'm surprised that this is happening now. Well, this little part, I guess. They, they're not done with this, they're gonna do a separate section later. That's fully focused on showcasing this tabletop game. Which is in the second session, which I don't even think that's part of the 14 hour live stream. It's like the other part of the live stream. It's like, it's like part two out of two or something. Do you pre to prefer eating something or drinking something? He's basically saying leave a comment like, okay, let's see, let's see what the chat is saying. Pizza? Some people are saying pizza, drinks. Somebody said they like potatoes. I don't know when, why is it that, why, why this happens, like when I, un, when I minimize this thing, or I take it out of full screen, I lose the actual chat. I don't know why that happens. But now I lost it again completely, but oh well. <laughs> Can you guys imagine if、uh, Riot Games or Blizzard did this? You know, the guys who do、uh, Genshin Impact, the Chinese dev team that does Genshin Impact, they, do, they don't do this sort of thing, but they do do those like one hour sessions every time before a big patch, which sometimes they either let the voice actors do it. Or they themselves do it. ちょっと気づく通りですね。まあ左上になんかよくゲームで見るような。メインクエのね。はいはい。感じの見出しがありつつ。本当だ、すげえ。左上にありつつ。そして右側の方に。
今チュートリアルっていうのとハテナがいくつか並んでるんですけど、うん、これはインスタンスダンジョンのなんか新コードとかでねよく見るような感じでここを見ていただくと途中から合流してもあ今なんかこれのどの辺やってるんだなっていうのがすぐこうちょっとパッと分かるように今回は。Did someone literally just paint that or print that、uh, grid out on a printer? <laughs> For the field? 松沢さんのすぐ下この辺、うんうんはいはい、これ一番その松沢さんの下にあるやつが、うんうん、バトルの時にこういうですねマップが登場しましてこの上に我々のキャラクターがこうコマで動き回るので、うん、そうそうそうそう Are they trying to determine like what their jobs are gonna be in the, in the like the different roles, the different jobs? It says job down there ファミコンウォーズの画面とかファミコンウォーズ懐かしいファミコンそうそうそう。若い人たちはタクティクスオーガとかの。それ若いのかはい。いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、Grid, like a field, not like a piece of paper with it printed on it. あ、オッケー。うん。ま、今こういうライトパーティーでやってんだなみたいなのをここで確認していただければと思います。はい。はい。では画面の方はじゃあで大丈夫です。はい。で最後にですね、サブ放送をより楽しんでいただけるようにです
。暗黒か。これ黒いですね。黒いですね。黒いです。もっと出てくるかもしれない。そうね。はい。好きな食べ物は。好きな食べ物。食べ物。好きなお菓子は。<笑>好きなお菓子、好きなお菓子はたい焼き好きですね。たい焼きいいですね。Okay, they're asking him like, what type of food do you like? What's your favorite food? で、たい焼き。そういうこと。This is such weird questions. Like, why are you asking these questions? Like, he's all embarrassed. Like, why would you ask that? Like, why while you guys are live? Like, it's like way to put somebody on the spot. So <laughs> you start asking, like they're literally asking him. They, he came in to be the game master, and they're like, "What's your job in real life? What's your job in the game? What's your favorite food?" <laughs> like, why, why are you bombarding the game master with all these questions? <laughs> Okay, I want to see like what the jobs are going to be structured as, because I assume you're going to play as jobs from the game. And if it's a light party, that means that typically you have to have one tank, one、uh, healer, and two DPS. So you guys can't really see it because I'm in the way. But it, like if I move myself like up here. Now you can see, kind of, there's down there. You know, you got your four different、uh, party members. はい、ちょっと事前に教えていただきましたそのご希望のジョブの、はい、キャラクターを、えー、皆さんのお手元に今ご用意しております。リミットブレイクまでは。<笑>え誰が何やんの？おじゃあちょっとまだどのジョブかという。You know what's funny is I'm I'm getting the impression that the guys who are gonna be playing the game they don't even know how to play the game. Like they're going in blind and the so the game master and I'm pretty sure the two guys at the back. Like next to the guy who's the game master, are they know how to play? But these other four, it's almost as if they don't seem to know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm not sure. I could be wrong. で、それを受けて、え、集まったという形になります。ま、本来ギルドリーブ、あの、一人で受けるものではありますけれども、ちょっとですね、今回はあの、ゲリルド様の方からですね、どうもこう、アップからどうもたくさん泣いてて、めん
<笑>そうねあの続き気になるけどそろそろ PLL だそうなんで<笑>皆さんぜひ PLL を聞いてくださいね Is this how D&D's played? I've never played it before <笑>おおけいでかでジョブスでかでジョブスこれいいねこのコマねでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブスでかでジョブパラディン、ハネトツノガ、ゾディリンゴシュウィン、バーディン、アサマナー。見てるみんなも本当ご飯とかお菓子とか食べながらやってる。我々もあの好き勝手やらせてもらいます。ゆるゆると,ゆるゆると行きますから。I don't get the part with like the food. Like I don't understand what, what, what they start talking about that. Oh, okay, so all the stuff is in those boxes. でですね、このゲームでは、えー、と戦闘では、えー、冒険者。が一人ずつ自分のターンというものをまあなんか攻撃したりだったりとか動いたりみたいなことをえお一人ずつやっていって。What? That was it? <laughs> That was it? Anyway, um, yeah, so that was it. Is this the trailer? What happened? Okay. Why did they cut them off? Oh, is this supposed to be like the start of their RP tabletop RPG? Like, this is the kind of the setting or something? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Like, <laughs> this is so random. 14 hour live stream, it's like, <gasps> what? The official benchmark? This is it. This is the new benchmark. I was right. I called it. I said they were going to do bench work, and I don't think they're going to do job trailers. I I'll be very surprised if they do that in this live stream. But this is it, guys. This is the new benchmark. So far, the graphics don't look. It's hard to tell. Like, from the compressed video, I can't tell a difference between the current way the game looks and the new way the game looks. But this is it. This is the new benchmark. That's scene one. Oh, you, you know what's cool about the benchmark? You get to see the artifact gear for each job. It's so compressed. Like, the video is so blocky. I can't even. It goes as high as 1080p. This is a good way to see. Okay, that's the,、um, the Viper. There's the Samurai. I don't know what that thing was. What was that? Machinist? That was Machinist. That's Ninja. That is the Viper. That's the new job. So the two new jobs are the Viper, which has the dual blade thing, the other one is the Pictomancer. Okay, that's the Scholar and the Dark Knight. Oh, that, that one over there must be Pictomancer.
Honestly, if this is the way the new graphics look, this doesn't really look that different from the current way the game looks. Like, this... This is kind of underwhelming. Until I get the actual benchmark in my own hands to be able to test, I can barely tell the difference in the graphics quality just watching this compressed video. I mean, it doesn't look leaps and bounds different. Although, I, it probably wasn't supposed to look that different. Pictomancer is a caster. I haven't really noticed the Pictomancer doing it, doing anything yet. That was the scholar, or yeah, that was scholar. There's Bard, the Viper doing his limit break, I guess. Oh no, that was a special move. No, that's the limit break. That's gotta be the limit break. Warrior did his limit break. This is so random. I was not expecting them to do this just out of the blue. That was it? That benchmark seemed kind of short. <laughs> Why does he wear that? Why does he just keep wearing that? He should just keep wearing that. Said so he's a floating head. Hi. <laughs> I, I still don't get the thing with the with the green screen jacket. I don't understand. I didn't catch what he was saying. Man, I want to download that benchmark. Is that benchmark up? なんと言っても冒頭大変気になるトレーラーから映像から始まりましたけれども。そうですね。まああのまあパックス行った時も。Benchmark, benchmark, benchmark. <laughs> See, he knows. He knows everybody wants the benchmark. はい。今ご覧いただいたのがえっとベンチマークで流れるリアルタイムの映像をそのまままあ編集したえつなぎ合わせた動画になっているのであれが皆さんのPCでそのままえ確認していただけるのがまあベンチマークソフトになっております。は
まずは、and the GTX 970. I gotta bust out my old GTX 1080 and GTX 970, and RX 480, and RX 5700 XT. June 28th, guys. June 28th is early access. I will be streaming this game live. Uh, probably most of the playthrough, not all of it, but probably a lot of the story playthrough, I will be streaming it live. <laughs> I have already pre-ordered the game, like the deluxe or collectors. What? No, I'm not not collectors. I've I've ordered the whatever the one that has the pre-order bonuses. I've already pre-ordered it. So I've got Zidane. I've got um the earring that gives you plus thirty percent exp. All the way to level 90. Yeah, so I got this stuff because I pre ordered already. The bonus items. And for those that are curious, right now, Final Fantasy XIV is doing the Final Fantasy XIV, Final Fantasy XVI collaboration. It's going to be doing that for the next, about a month, about like four weeks left to do that. So if you're curious and you're already, like you, if you were previously subbed to the game, you might want to resub just to get that stuff done. If you're thinking about resubbing to the game. ゲーム内特典も全部入りのコレクターズエディションというのがございます。こちらWindows版とMac版のみが対応となっておりまして、でその他にリアルグッズだけ単体のコレクターズボックスというのも御用意しております。They're basically saying like if you want the physical statue of the Viper and like the cloth map and the art book and all the physical things. You can order it separately if you want. You don't have to buy that with the game, with the physical copy of the game. If, so basically, if you buy the collector's edition, you get, you get the, the CD key, I guess, or the, the in-game key. So he was saying, like, if you want to be able to get, like, if you want early access and you don't want to wait for the thing to, to arrive with the key, you don't have to buy the collector's edition. You can buy the collector's box separately and the digital, uh, the digital key, which was, like, the, the third one on that table that he showed. I haven't purchased a collector's edition Final Fantasy XIV in a while. Like, I did buy the Heaven Sword and the Stormblood one. I did not buy the Shadowbringers and the Endwalker one. So I don't know if I'm going to get this one, to be honest. But I like the map. The cloth map is the sort of thing that I would uh, put in, like, a display or, like, a, what do you call it, a, a, a picture frame and put that up on the wall. Alright, this is the stuff that I'm really uh, stoked for. I want that arc mount. So if you get the collector's edition, you get the arc mount, which is from Final Fantasy IX. You get the garnet minion so she can follow you around. Kind of like the pawn in Dragon's Dogma. And then you also get the chocobo brush for the Pictomancer job, which is the second new job. Yeah, the arc mount is from Final Fantasy IX. And that was the secret summon from Final Fantasy IX. So there's a lot of Final Fantasy IX themes in this. I wish Yoshi P would put back on that weird uh, green screen uh, shirt or whatever and cover. So he's like a floating head where it's just his neck. <laughs> Is floating next to the the dude who's dressed up like uh, Zodiac and uh, Heidelin fused together like Two Face. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for that arc mount. The, man, that guy is going to be dressed like that for the full 14 hours. <laughs> Props to him for putting up with that. Think about that, Think about that makeup, though, because imagine, like, you're, you're on camera, and you're going to be... They've got lights, 
blaring in their face the whole time. He, his, his body's probably trying to sweat, but all that face paint is just like keeping it in. That, that must be, oh man. はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。は
Honestly, I feel like it doesn't look that different. Now, the hair, they're talking about the hair on the girl. The back of her head, the hair texture looks, yeah, I can see it. I can see what they're talking about, but it's like they're saying, like, look at her hair. Okay, now he's talking about the grass. Hmm. He's saying that when the wind blows across the grass, you can see, like, you can see it properly, the grass properly moves based off of where the wind is on, on the field. I like how there's like a giant Venus flytrap just on the left side over there. There's some white distinct flowers. Are those flowers? Oh, you're right. There are, there are flowers. Hmm. Hey, that's a good point. You know what? I don't see... Yeah, I don't see the flowers on the new one. Sampo yeah, but see, like, look at the grass. Yeah, you're right, dude. Like, this, look at all the flowers on the old one. The flowers on the new one are, like, super small. I mean, you can see them. The grass definitely looks more dense. He needs to fix his camera angle though, because he's like looking too he's looking at it like downward at the grass too much. Like the other guy on the left is showing it properly. Uh the grass does come across as more dense though in the newer one. Do you notice that? Like the vegetation when she runs through the field. Notice how on the left, when she runs through the grass, it, it's like she's just phasing through the grass. I had to remove my gamer glasses just to see that. Looks like they added environment interactivity. Yeah, the, the meshes actually react physically. It's like there's physics in the mesh now, whereas before you just phase through all the objects. <clears throat> This is the white griffin from the Stormblood or Heaven Sword expansion. Man, they need to like synchronize what they're doing. It's like so hard to tell because they're looking at different parts of the map. Uh, look at the shadows of the trees on 7.0. The shadows are definitely more distinct on the ground. Look at the shadow of the tree on 7.0 versus the shadow. Man, the guy on 6.5 needs to, like, do his camera angles better. Because it's, like, so... It's so generic movement he's literally just flying and moving left and right oh wait does the mount move does the mount actually like tilt now when it's going left to right yeah look the mount's tilting look at how the mount tilts I like how they go into such detail on what they're actually changing, so that so that you don't. Yeah, 7.0 looks better from a distance, even though the video is so compressed. You can tell that 7.0 looks better. It doesn't tilt that smoothly though. It's like Microsoft Flight Simulator. They added Microsoft Flight Simulator into the game. <laughs> yeah, I always found that kind of funny how in the in the Final Fantasy, like when you turn left to right, your character, your your uh, mount just kind of like glides. So 
So this area that they're showing is a new area. Like this is a new in-game area that's oh, only in the expansion. I kind of want to see them show like an old area to see how the older areas will look different. <laughs> I feel it in me, guys. I feel like I need to return to this game. I'm feeling the urge to go back to Final Fantasy XIV. I need to finish Dragon's Dogma. And Final Fantasy VII. Okay, let's look. Check it out. Look at the ground. Look at the tessellated ground. Man, that ground looks way better on the newer one. Look at that. It still looks kind of low res by today's standards, but it's still significantly better than the old one. Although... <laughs> Yoshi P is saying that in the older version of the game, basically since 2.0, they've used basic a flat plane with a fake looking uh, texture. It's like there's no actual elevation differences on those stones. He's saying that it's literally a flat it's a flat uh, plane with a, uh, a colored texture that looks like there's rocks. It gives the illusion that there's depth, but there is no depth. That's what he's talking about right now. Yeah, the level of the... It's just like one flat surface, basically. He said somebody just commented, like, Come on, 6.5, do your best. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's gonna do its best. <laughs> He said that they didn't want to make it so insanely uh, better looking that it would be way, way too hard to run for a lot of people. So, and also you got to keep in mind that because this game is on console, you have to maintain backwards compatibility with the consoles. Like you can't make it run so, you can't make the graphics be so uh, high end that you're... The average uh, player can't play the game anymore, is what he was saying. Look at the crystal, though. Even the crystal. The crystal on, on 7.0 looks way better. Look at the lighting. I don't think there, I don't think there's any ray tracing in this game, but it's all like light maps just baked in. But the thing is, you can tell the difference in the, the crystal itself. The light reflections off of the crystal. He's saying, but there's no, there's no actual ray tracing. He's talking about the shaders. There's no mesh shaders. It's not gonna it's not gonna like kill a 1060 to play this game. Although the 1060 is gonna be kind of the minimum spec for 1080p. If it's 1080p. RX 480 and GTX 970 slash GTX 1060 are the minimum required for this upcoming game. Upcoming expansion. <laughs> so, 
っしょよいしょ<笑>これもこれは散ると逆にねキャラクターが見やすいようにしてあげてください He's having to read the thing to know where to go, to, like what to navigate to next. Do they like not rehearse the different sections? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna move myself over here. It's better to block Yoshi P than to block、uh, Zodiac and、uh, Hydalin. あのちなみに 6.58 環境は皆さんと同じあの全く同じなんだろう公開サーバーほぼ一緒っていう状態なんで,で、ねはい、あの僕みたいにあの時間入れたら即パッて画面が Yeah, so basically、uh, the guy in the cosplay he is on 6.58 and Yoshi P is on 7.0 画面お願いします、はい Alright, here we go. Then, Mazu, Kotsu Minna, O Kaijo, Shimate. Kotsu Minna, O Kaijo. The Mizunure, Ireto Moramas. Mizunure. The lighting, to me, it just looks like the texture resolution is sharper. But the thing is, if you look at 6.5, the hair. The way the hair looks on 6.5 is more. It looks more、uh, shiny. It looks shinier on the older one. Doesn't, doesn't the hair look like it has more glossy shine to it in the older version? Her face is darker. Yeah, well, that's because they're lighting. It's like the light map that they're using in 7.0 is more pronounced. Maybe, but notice, I can't help but think that the hair in the older version looks shinier and glossier. The skin on 7.0 looks shinier and glossier. The skin on the old version looks more matte finish, but the hair is glossier. And on the newer version, the hair is more matte and the skin is shinier. <laughs> So, I, I don't know which one actually looks better there. I think they should try to like match up the camera angle. This is kind of this is a terrible way to compare them. <laughs> do, they, do these guys not realize that it's not matched up frame for frame? <laughs> this one's a matter of preference. かなり光沢も確かにはいテカリが出てますねそうですねおはおはだつやつやに見えるまあこの辺をねどこまで Are they using depth of field because I feel like this game has no depth of field I noticed how the background looks kind of blurred and that's not normally how Final Fantasy XIV looks there's normally no depth of field or it's very very、uh, minor Wait, what is he doing? Oh, he's changing the、uh, he's changing the light, the direction of the light. Ah, yeah. But actually, this is the same parameter of 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 They keep cha they're changing the lighting.、Mm. Mm. <笑>あなたの声響くのでそうね声通る族なんだめっちゃ俺今何言ってるか聞こえてたんで<笑>乗るよ気をつけないとマクロ4を実行<笑>入っちゃってくださいこれなんか入っていいですよねなるほどうんそれが外れたらもういい。はい、あ、つまった。Are they gonna do like objects next? あ、そうっすね。寄ってる感じ。うん、こう突入後一応そっか実行するのかこれも
I, I still think it was so random how they were showing that a tabletop game, and then he randomly just like cut those guys off, and then just showed the benchmark, and then went to this. Like, just no break, nothing, no notification, just like, nope, you guys are done. <laughs> oh, they're showing the, okay, the weather. なので、雨。これ左が6.58。はい。右が70なんですけど、もう床を見ていただけるとわかる通り、すごい。左はね、なんとなく濡れた感じを一生懸命作ったんですけど、もう水、右は完全にね、水が浮いてる。Yeah, you guys can tell it's pretty obvious. The one on the right looks better for the rain. The reflection on the ground for the the rain. This is Antivore Keep Hard Mode. Or no, this is the Lost City of Antivore. This is like an old dungeon, guys. This is like 2. Dot whatever. 2.3 or 2.4 or something. This is like before the first expansion, this area. The shaders are improved. The mesh shaders are a lot more dense. But some things still look kind of weird. Like, look at that weird spider web thing behind her on the right. Like, that to me, it just still looks so. Um, last gen. I don't know how to describe it. Oh, he's saying that they added more like physics based, uh, like the objects themselves in the environment. More of them animate now than they used to. Like the plants and the trees, leaves, foliage, they move around more. Yeah, you can definitely see them swaying in the wind. But that makes me realize like how static everything was in 14 compared to other games. Very much like old school WoW classic. Because uh, Throne and Liberty and a lot of the newer Korean MMOs, they, they have a lot more object movement in the environment. I like that they're showing an older area. The shadows are way darker. On 6.5. They are? Oh, well. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's weird because in that first scene that they were looking at in the new area, the shadows in 7.0 were a lot. But you can tell the contrast. Everything in 7.0 looks way more contrasty. So see how the broken uh, stones and stuff, the ruins look a lot more, like all the objects on the ground pop a lot better than in the old one. See how the old one just looks kind of washed out and flat? This scene right here actually makes the newer one look a lot better. But it's, to me, 7 Auto has that Horizon Forbidden West look when it comes to the actual character. What I mean by that is the character seems like there's, it's like someone has a light, like shining at the front of the character. Because the character seems like they're, they're just, they're illuminated too much on the new version. That it, do you, you guys know what I mean? Like it seems like because there's no glo like the global illumination. There's all these light maps. So it's like there's this this 
this random light source that's shining in her face like she's got like an o-ring light she's got a ring light in front of her or something whereas on the 6.5 she doesn't have a ring light it's like where'd that ring light come from and why is there a ring light in her face on 7.0 because that, that makes it look um it, it's not a good thing i'm saying it's not a good thing to put a ring light in front of the main character on the screen like it just it's it, it just looks like some kind of fake global illumination or it's like there's light maps that are there for no reason I can already tell Digital Foundry is going to criticize that. They're going to say that that, that doesn't look real, it, that doesn't look good compared to the old version of the game. It gives it that Horizon Forbidden West look where the characters look like everyone's got like a ring light in their face. <laughs> It's raining, but her hair is not getting wet. Or is it? What? It's like there's this unnatural light source in front of the character in 7.0. He was saying something about how they, they're properly able to uh, animate the textures now on armor and objects that look like they're supposed to be metal but I, to me that doesn't look that different from the old one i don't know i just kind of think that that unnatural light source in front of the character is not really that great <clears throat> It's the lights from real life, ray tracing seeping into the game. Maybe it's the ray tracing off of this guy's costume that's just bouncing back into the game world. This uh, live letter is going to be memorable because he dressed up in that suit though, in that costume. <laughs> oh, they're in Il Meg. They went to Il Meg. This is a Shadowbringer zone. From 5.0. Yeah, you can. Uh, this one's pretty obvious. The 7.0 looks better. Significantly better. The 6.5 looks like it's from the Xbox 360 and the PS3. You guys got to remember that the reason why the game 6.5 looks the way it looks is because this game was designed to run on a PS3. So <laughs> the fact that the game managed to hold up and look as well as it does for so long is a testament to the art direction more than anything. <laughs> Man, that, that the one on the left looks so bad. A lot of these are compression artifacts due to the live stream, so we're not able to really see. I mean, you can you can see the difference with the flowers. Seven Auto looks like it's designed around a PS4 Pro. Yeah, and it does support the PS4 Pro. So I mean, the, Seven Auto has to maintain backwards compatibility with PS4 base. You know, I can't help but think, someone pointed out earlier, 
In the very first section, they had white flowers in 6.5 that weren't showing up in 7.0. Now, notice, like, the tulips are showing up, like, the really tall flowers are rendering in 7. or 6.5, and they're not showing up in 7.0. The, look at the flowers though, the flowers move. Look, look, look at it in 6.5, you walk through the flowers, you phase through the objects. Oh, look at the flower. Look at the flower is a flat thing in the first in the 6.5. It's a flat line. If you look at it in the different angles. <laughs> she just phases through all the flowers in 6.5. <laughs> I can't help though, but notice that they removed those tall tulips. The tulips aren't there anymore. They got rid of them. Man, we are gonna be I'm gonna be playing a lot of this game. I can already tell. Like I, I'm getting the urge to go back. Just by watching this, I'm getting the urge to log in and go back to Final Fantasy XIV. What happened to that guy's thing? What did he do? He, <laughs> he like windowed it. He, he put it in windowed mode. Alt tab. Alt tab. I bet the chat's probably like spamming alt tab. No, they're just like f fangirling the whole time. <laughs> what are the people actually saying in here? Zawa Zawa. Help. F11? Oh, for full screen. Just click on... He needs to just click the icon in, at the taskbar and it'll probably go full screen again. His horn hit the Windows button by accident. There's fog. There's uh, what do they call it? Um, ambient occlusion. No, not ambient occlusion. Uh, man, what is that thing called? What's the English word for it? It's not ambient occlusion. It's uh. It's the fog thing. Volumetric something. Volumetric fog. Volumetric fog? Is that what it's called in English? Volumetric fog. He said there's volumetric fog in the new one. There, there was no volumetric fog in 14. Yeah, volumetric fog. I, I don't know, man. I, I personally don't really like volumetric fog. Because I remember in Monster Hunter World, I turned that off. Or I set it to low. Just because I didn't like the way it looked. It just made all the colors look uh, bland and, and washed out. For objects in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it tanks your frame rate like crazy. Yeah, I remember it tanked the frame rate in Monster Hunter World for like a GTX 1080 was only doing like 45 FPS in that game at 1440p. A Vega 64 was a little bit better because of brute forcing. 
It was like 50, 53. I remember I turned off volumetric fog, the thing goes up to like 75. Yes, okay, so level of detail, anti-aliasing, what does it say? Anti-aliasu. Uh, one of those is basically I'm looking at the settings that he has in the drop down he's got everything maxed out custom he's got custom settings though he's not running it on the highest settings he's got custom settings <laughs> okay, here we go. Anti aliasing. He's using FXAA. Can he like change that to TA? The, the jaggies. It's got jaggies. Oh, let me let me move myself out of the way so that me, let me put myself next to Yoshi. I'll just sit like right next to. <laughs> yeah, FXAA anti. This is how it looks with FXAA. Okay. Okay, here we go, here we go. Let's see what we got, let's see what we got. Let's see, DLAA. No? Come on, let's see what... Okay. <laughs> yep, lots. He's saying lots and lots of jaggies. As you walk around, look at that stuff. Look at the wings on that thing, man. That's going to give someone a seizure. Fix those wings. Those wings, are, they need to fix the wings on the... What is that thing called? Holka? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Show us the settings. Oh, man. Here we go. T-S-C-M-A-A. -A. That's new. That is not in the game right now. I don't even know what that stands for. So they're adding some new anti-aliasing techniques, he said. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, is he trying to... T-S-C-M-A-A What is that? T-S-C-M-A-A they have implemented a new technique. Did he apply it? He needs to apply it. He didn't apply it. Apply the setting. Don't you have to apply the setting? There's a button down there. Oh, I guess it automatically applies it now? Oh, I guess he didn't... But he didn't save it, though. I guess it'll revert back if he, like, closes it. Temporally stable, conservative, morphological anti-aliasing? Temporally stable. Man, the compression from the live stream makes it... It's so hard to tell, but yeah, I guess it's not... <laughs> oh, look, it fixed the stupid uh, wings. No, it didn't. The ones in the distance are still messed up. Like, they still look like they're flickery. 
二のみもう一個追加されてます。Okay, here we go. Plus jittering camera. Mac のみ。Temporal, temporally stable, conservative, morphological, anti-aliasing plus jittering camera. 止まってる時はちょっとやっぱりジラジラがある。止まる。止まる。ちょっとじらつく。わ、huh? かりますあ、はいはいはい。ちょっとじらつきますね。そうですね。I, I, I can't under, I can't barely understand what the difference is. ああ、確かに。ない I can barely. It, to me, it looks so blurry because of the live stream. Yeah, he, okay, he applied it now. なのでアンチエリアスの方法を変えるとあの画面のなんて言うんだろう全体のソフトさみたいなところが結構変わるので、うんはい、こだわって今回用意してるからちょっと試せる方はなるほどあの試してみてもらいたいでもちろんあのなんだお使いのね例えば PC 環境のスペックに応じてどれ使うみたいなのももちろんあると思うんで。はいうん He's saying that this, this spec change alone is the reason why they had to increase the minimum required graphics card, he said. To support TSC, T, T, TSCMAA. Seeing as you're next to him, ask him for MSAA support. Hey, can we get、um, can we get TS can we get TSC upscaling? Oh, this guy. <laughs> Why do they do this? Why do they do? Why do they torture him like this? They just go and put the camera on him. I feel like he wants to scratch his nose,、uh, but he is afraid that if he does it, he'll smudge the makeup and it will look bad. You see, he keeps on doing stuff with his nose. I think he wants to scratch his nose, but he can't. では、はい、えー、っと僕の実機だけでいいかな。はい、七点ゼロ画面をお願いします。はい。Okay, here we go. Here we go. More settings. More settings.、えーね、ここのソフトシャドウっていうものの説明をします。はい。はい、えー、現状。Okay, ソフトシャドウ。感じ。ソフトシャドウ。昨日影を。テクスチャー解像度が上がったんでめっちゃはっきり出る。Oh, okay. They're in the Rakhtika Great Wood Forest. Where there's lots of shadows due to all the, foil, all the big trees. Lots of jaggies in this area specifically because there's a lot of foliage. It looks like, okay, what does that say? テクスチャー。距離が近い方が当然くっきり見えるんですよ。ああそうですね、だからこの木の幹見ていただければわかるんですけど、はい、太くて地面に対して近いのでくっきり出ますよね。はい、でも地面の。Man, they added a lot of texture. There's a lot of graphic settings that were not in the previous build. 
。で、葉っぱに関しては、当然この木の幹よりはるかにこう高い位置にあるので,ああで、ね、地面との距離が。Okay, he's basically saying that the taller the tree, the, the degree at which how strong the shadow appears on the ground is different. So, like, the taller parts of the tree cast a different level of darkness versus, like, the lower the part of the tree is to the ground. So basically, leaves and stuff will use soft shadows, and hard objects that don't move in the wind will use a hard shadow. The only thing you can read on the screen is system config. What's funny is most of it is actually like English words, except you have to know how to read the. The uh, katakana. So the first drop down, he has it set to the maximum settings. It's like max. The the this one's the this one's the strong one, isn't it? It's like strong. I do appreciate that they go into this level of depth, though, explaining all the changes that they're doing to the graphics. What other developer actually does this? ここも選べますから自分の作りたい映像に合わせて選べますね。ウィンドウズ版とかの方。まあここにね今フレーム。Never seen a dev do so much for a live stream. まあ変わんないです。Well, whatever he just turned on, he set this to max. This is max. This is soft shadow. So this is soft shadows on maximum settings is what he just changed. えっと場所とか。何かのオブジェクトに対して対応してるんじゃなくてもうファイナルファンタジー14すべての影の処理に対して行われているのではいあのもう 7.0 インストールしたらこの状態がになっていくと So they have done things to the global illumination because they can't really do soft shadows without proper global illumination but they're not using like ray tracing or anything to do this it's, it's all pre-baked light maps for the gi he's basically answering the comments people keep on saying when's the benchmark when's the benchmark and he keeps saying guys tomorrow it's tomorrow ashita ashita means tomorrow It's coming out tomorrow, guys. The benchmark. I'm gonna be making a lot of like GPU benchmark comparisons with this bench, this new one. So, okay, so they've changed the shadows, they've changed anti aliasing, or they've added like new types of anti aliasing. They have improved the texture, especially things that are on the ground. They're, they've added physics based uh, object per object movement to, to objects in the environment, like the flowers, for example, and the grass. I like how they use this guy as like the the please wait the transition scene. They switch to his camera like when they're trying to figure out like what's the next scene. They're going to to showcase. Talking about Dragon's Quest Monster Battle, I don't know why. In what context, I don't know. Okay. That was random. Okay. 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 Okay.
Wait, what is this? Where is this? Oh, this is the thing that I never did because I quit the game. <laughs> this is the uh, the island exploration stuff that I this is this is the current content that I never did. ま、今回シェーダーであの本当にちゃんとあの優待波のシミュレーションができるようになったので、まだちょっとね、使う場所ってもうもちろん限定的ではあるんですけど、こういった環境自体のリアルさっていうところもまできるようにそうね、ここど
えー、っとその演出とか、えー、っと感情表現に見えちゃう可能性があるのでカットシーンでは自動でオフになってます。うん目の演技の邪魔に下手するとなると思います。Talking about the eyes. あとグループポ、はい、グループポーズの時に動かれると、はい、なんかえこいや、そうか。He's talking about like the eyes. He was giving an example like when a mage is when you when a mage wears the outfit where you can't really see the face, but but the eyes are still exposed. 普段遊んでる時のパブリックフィールドでのなんか演出もなくただ日常を過ごしている時に動いてます。<laughs> They did some kind of changes, like when you do a group pose. Now, something about I couldn't catch what he was trying to say about like the face earlier. YouTube recommended to you to me. <laughs> Are they all like watching the same thing right now? <laughs> <laughs> その時にまあキャラとキャラがこう会話してるところをちょっと見た時に目がねその揺れてるみたいなところがまたそのまあなんかそういう細かいこだわりがねまた世界を作っていくっていうことだと思うんでまあこれはこだわりで入っている部分なので。まあそんなこともやってますよと。こうもう皆さんいろんな発見をしてるとね。服のディティールも細かくなってるとか。ああそうですね。よるとね。ディティールっていうかまあ素材感がねそもそも今回布シェーダー前あの小林さんのそうそうえっと開発パネルでやったんですけど今回は布に対して何何種類やっけな素素材パターンがめちゃくちゃあるんであのお気に入りの装備かなりね素材くっきりで出たりしていると思うのでその辺もちょっと見てもらえるとみんな喜ぶんじゃないかなベロアとかすごいわかりやすいこれ楽しみですねあと皮も皮の質感もそうですねではいえちょっと一旦ここでさみんなを I didn't catch what he was saying about the face どうしましたちょっと But they have Because of the way they've changed the the light sources, in general, the the characters like the the main character appears way more illuminated than they did in the older game or in the previous build. I don't know if that's necessarily better. I, I feel like that's like I was saying earlier. It definitely gives it that Horizon Forbidden West look, where you know how when. When you see the characters in that game, it's like someone has a ring light in front of them or something when they're talking. Like when when they're just in the cutscenes. I want to see if they have any examples of like spell effects during combat. Like, if, I don't know how much that matters because I know, like, in group content, most people, pretty much everybody, especially like if you're doing end game raids, they turn off those settings for everybody except maybe their own character, so they don't get bombarded with like way too many spell effects. Because if they do, if they leave it on, it's near impossible to figure out what to do during the fight unless you literally have the entire fight memorized, and you can do do everything flawlessly. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna take a quick break. I will be yeah, back, but I'll just leave this running. Alright, let's go. まだね、はい、雲だけまだピッチ調整中だったああなんかわかりますこのオブジェクトの詰まり具合、うん、なるほどねそっかそれを見せたかった
この植生の密度と確かに密度高いですねユニークなね、うん、オブジェクトの数あ、空綺麗いただきましたありがとうございますこの辺もさ<笑>その恐る恐るのカメラワークが<笑>こすごい緊張感が伝わってきますこのちょっと日差しが強くて、はい、この影面の雰囲気も今までちょっと出せなかった感じなんで,で、ね、太陽の照りつけてる感がすごい出てますね,すね俺ほらどこまでもオブジェクトがね、はいはいはいはい、これ全部あのいける範囲しか描画されてないというかいける範囲なのでこれ円形ではない、はい、この辺も実際に歩いていけるのでこれは結構いいと思うんだ僕は。<笑><笑>そうですねあとはそのさっき説明したソフトシャドウ、はい、この建物本体の,あの影はくっきりなんですけどヘリ高い位置にあるこういうものに関してはこのボヤなるほどなるほど怖い怖い怖い怖いよ怖いよ大丈夫かな緊張感ほらうわ遠くに何かなるほど<笑>ちょちょ待ってよちょ待ってよちょ待ってよ<笑>あ、なんか点灯会が続いておりますね。大大丈夫大丈夫かな。大丈夫大丈夫かな。ね、大丈夫。みんななんかね、ご覧の皆さんが逆に気にしだしてます。おわすごい。めっちゃ綺麗じゃない。すごい。神の力による夜が訪れました。あ、this one the new areas。トラウ。はい。これも,もうライトの今回処理をあのより最適化してライトをめっちゃ置けるようになったんで、はい、異国情緒はね抜群に出てます、はい、新しい地域新しい土地での冒険っていうところはすごい出せてるんでこういうところはちょっと注目してほしい<笑>今もうダメです私見て思ったことを言っていいことなのかどうかわからないから「ほえー」しか言わないことを今決めました。ね、確かに観光地感ありますね。So I、向こう側にいる開発がめっちゃザーザー、like、<笑>してるんだよな。そうね。ちょっと一瞬だけ、えー、っと、ザーディーレリーに戻してもらっていいですか、はい、?It's like they were going, okay, they're, they're trying to make the game look better. The goal was to make the game look better, but not make it look so drastically different that it would alienate. The player base, because the player base is already so familiar with the game, they want the game to still feel very familiar and retain that feel of how it's always kind of looked. But they wanted to improve the visual, the visuals at least to some degree, so that it would be more modernized. They always have to go back to him every time they need to change. I guess they don't want him to see the. They don't want the public to see the dev menu items or whatever. I don't know. You were watching the 1490 versus. I didn't do a versus. Did I do a ver video on versus? The versus? It wasn't a versus. It was more like a. That was a video about the connector, right? I think I know which video you're talking about. The 12, the 12 volt high power video. Huh. It's a very reaction video. <laughs> What did he do? Wait, what? Oh, I, I guess he was using like dev GM commands to like float his character all the way to the top or something? まあ、これだけ円形も含めてきっちりね出せるようになりましたのでほら
なんかそうですねみんなめちゃくちゃ<笑>ね、what, what, what TSCM T whatever it was called, I forgot. Someone said it earlier. Temporally stable, conservative, morphological, anti aliasing. TSCMA. もう一度来ますねみたいなこと言,言ったんだけどいやそんなののために無理してその置かなくてもいいよって言ったら本当に置いてなかった<笑>あとねごめんごめんあと一個だけあと一個だけこれはねやばいやばい The safest bet would be to get a card that has regular eight pins ああそう But if you have to choose like I mean これならやばいの映ってない,い,い、ね、It depends on the budget ultimately Wait, what? Okay, okay, so now they're showing. Okay. The objects are not flat anymore. I don't know. 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 Some of those, uh, the green vegetable, whatever that green vegetable, like, is that bitter gourd or whatever that is? That thing doesn't look that good. The pineapples look okay, but I feel like, I feel like the fruits didn't, weren't really that impressive looking. He was saying how, he was just making, remarking that it was not flat looking anymore. Like the flat grapes that were a huge meme that plagued the game for pretty much its entire existence. ボソッとした独白が危ねえだった時は本当に危ないんだなってことですね。If you if you always play Fortnite with over 360 FPS, why do you need a 4090? I don't understand. Like if you're already playing Fortnite at 360 FPS, like what is the point of the 4090? Like what's the point? I'm just I'm a little I'm just trying to understand what's the reason. Like, why would you buy a 4090 now when it's going to be replaced later this year? Just, I mean, that's that's just just trying to understand. Like, if you're already getting 360 FPS, like, is there even a point in buying a GPU? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! He's got upscalers. He's got upscalers. AMD FSR. What? I was not expecting upscalers. Graphics upscaler. What? Basically, they've got AMD. What is he saying? He's literally just explaining how FSR works. Okay. Wait, DLSS also is being added, guys. Wow, this is like way surprising. I was not expecting the upscalers to be added to the game. Okay, 
、えー、ちょっとねなんで実装したかも含めてこっちこっからはちょっとパワポで説明させてもらいます。まあすね、だって見た目が変わらない。He didn't say what version, most likely 2.0. 全体が綺麗に見えるための技術なので。Wait, wait, wait, hold on. What was the other thing down there? There was another thing I was trying to read what that last one was. Super resolution support. 全プラットフォームです。これは、あの、今、ファイナルファンタジー14が遊べるすべてのプラットフォーム、ハードウェアで、全超解像プラットフォーム。The, so basically, okay, yeah, it's, it's in English, so you can see it's in English. So basically, they're as, adding a super resolution for every, I think, even the consoles, all platforms. Xbox also will be getting this. I don't think it's worth it for Fortnite, to be honest. Like, if you're already able to play at such a high FPS, there's no point. Oh, okay, I was wrong. I, I mean, I, I didn't know. He didn't say the version. Now he's saying the version. So you're getting FSR 1.0 and DLSS 2.0. I don't know why they're going with these versions. These are the old versions of both technologies. Windows. Okay, FSR will be enabled by default. For those playing on Windows with a graphics card that supports DLSS, we recommend changing the resolution settings to DLSS. So, okay, FSR is default? はい。DLS2.0 was released sometime between Turing and Ampere, because I know DLSS1.0 was the really blurry one, which no one uses anymore. Why is why are they doing FSR1.0 though? That's like so old. Accessible when playing on Windows with a graphics card support. Yeah, they're, they're making this huge emphasis that something about, like, win you have to be on Windows if you want to use DLSS, besides the fact that you also have to have uh, NVIDIA GPU. Okay, it says right here, when it, oh, because Mac, this game is on Mac. Mac gets FSR. When AMD FSR is selected on the Windows and Mac, the resolution scaling may be adjusted between 50 and 100%, lowering the value, reduces stress on your device. AMD FSR maintains the desired resolution via spatial upscaling of lower. This is a big deal for these guys, man, because, like, Final Fantasy has not had, like, an upscale technology literally at all, ever. So, this is the first time. まあ、yeah, because multiplayer games tend to be very CPU bound. So, yeah, I agree. I agree with what uh, Nicholas is saying. I would do the CPU upgrade first. I mean, the fact that you're already getting 360 FPS, though, to me, like, what's the point of buying such, wasting so much money on a GPU if you already have an FPS that's that high? That, that's what I'm saying, because it's like, you're just going to open yourself up to the probability of a melting connector if you're running the GPU at so hard. I wouldn't recommend high wattage GPUs for esports games, honestly speaking. They're, they're unnecessary, for one thing. They're making a big deal about AMD FSR because a lot of people play this game on Mac. And Mac is AMD only, so you only get FSR on Mac. You don't have DLSS on Mac. 
DLSS, he said, is like a Windows only thing. When, does that imply that you can't use it on Linux? When enabled, dynamic resolution will automatically. Okay. Yeah, we already know how it works. Dynamic resolution. It literally says dyn. Dynam dynamic resolution. <laughs> CD graphic graphics card AMD FSR FSR how do they say that in Japanese FSR DLSS <laughs> ここを例えば60fpsとか30とかつねにAMD <笑> He's saying you can get a much better frame rate. Well, okay, we already know this, guys, but he's explaining it to all the people who don't know what any of this stuff is. Like, I, I guaranteed, there is li there are literally 68,000 people watching this live stream right now, uh, including us. And um, they don't, most of these guys don't know what DLSS and FSR are. So he's having to explain, like, what this is because... He's afraid that a lot of people are going to play the game and they're not going to have a powerful enough GPU. So he's explaining, like, he's, he was emphasizing that if you want to use DLSS, you have to be on Windows, you have to have NVIDIA. So the, the subset of players that will have access, he expects to be smaller. Therefore, he's saying they have selected AMD FSR as the default behavior because it basically applies to everyone. So he said if you're on Mac, you only get FSR. If you're on uh, the consoles, the consoles, he said, they will not have FSR at launch, but they do plan to implement. Okay, here we go, here we go. Consoles, consoles, here we go. Everybody's favorite topic on this channel, PS4 and Xbox. <laughs> Here we go, this is it. See, certain features may not be applicable. So I think some of this stuff, like FSR, will be backported into them later. To reduce the stress on PlayStation 4, super sampling will be reduced. Oh wow, dynamic resolution and LOD will be forcibly enabled on PS4. You get dynamic resolution by default, it's like always on. Resolution. So they say that dynamic resolution. Xbox Series S. To reduce stress on Xbox Series S, LOD for shadows will be forcibly enabled. This is very interesting. I'm actually, man, these guys, props to Yoshi P. He always delivers all the information that you could possibly want to hear about. He, like, covers all of it. PS5やPCでいじれるみたいなさはありますけど、えっと全体的なグラフィックスアップデートの恩恵はしっかりPS4版でもえ、Xbox え、ご安心して遊んでいただければ。ね、もちろんあの、プレイステーション 5 
、えー、と1個だけ言っといてくれって言われたんですけど、はいえー、とこのグラフィックスアップデート、まあ、従前からお伝えしている通り 7.0 で実装される新規オブジェクト、うん、新規装備とかは全部、はい、さっき言ったテクスチャー解像度も上がってるし、はいえー、とあとキャラクター周りね髪の毛とかはまあ全部やってるんですけど、うん、過去の、えー、と例えばうんとアーティファクトジョブ専用装備とかそういう、はいまあ、できるだけ目立つものは対応してるんですけど一部キャラクターとかもまだ古いものとかっていうのがあるのでなんかこうちょっと 7.X シリーズの序盤なんかこいつ他のやつに比べると解像度が低いみたいなのいると思うんですけどとにかく追いかけてどんどん修正していきます、はい、で、えー、と 6.0 でリリースされてるジョブ、えーえー、と専用装備っていうのが、えー、と 7.1 対応なんですね予定が。あなるほどなのでまあ、oh, okay. Okay. So, around 6.0, so he's basically explaining what we already know. He's basically talking about、uh, when they decided they wanted to start doing a graphical update. Around the time when 6.0 came out, they committed to changing the graphics to some degree. In fact, they first talked about it, I think, after, like on the first live letter when 6.0 came out. <laughs> He's saying that they, they didn't want to lose the original look of the game, but they still wanted to modernize it to a degree that made it not like look super, super old. So basically, he says. He's explaining like when people, when they first said that they were going to do a graphics update, everybody was thinking that every he was like some of the player base was afraid that the game would lose its 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 uh, iconic look. People were surprised that they were considering doing this. But they decided to commit to it because they felt like the game needed to have a newer, like a, an update in terms of how it looks. But they, they basically, like, it was really hard. Like, he was saying that it was really tough for the team to decide how they wanted to change the graphics without... Making people angry or upset about changing the visual appearance of, of how their character looks, how the、uh, environments look. Because you know, you know how there's people who are always going to want to hang on to the way it looks because it's like, I don't want it to look modern or whatever. <laughs> okay, so in this next segment, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna talk about like quality of life balances, changes that they're doing to some of the way, some of the features in the game, the way they're changing some of the ways that they function. But yeah, oh, okay, I think at this point, we've gotten most of the. The stuff that I wanted to hear about, mainly the benchmark. I'm actually really, really surprised that the benchmark is coming out tomorrow. I thought it was going to come out next month. So I am so stoked for that benchmark.、Um, we've seen the graphics changes. So I guess the TLDR, for those that missed the part where they were, he was showing the different scenes and the different changes, They've added more anti aliasing techniques. They've added, they're adding DLSS and FSR.、Um, they're adding some other level of detail changes and tweaks. It's still DX11. That's kind of a bummer, to be honest. I was really hoping it would be DX12, or at least have a DX12 option. 
、えー、と防衛できるような形っていうのを、はい、そろそろあのきちんと作らないといかん時期かなと。One of his priorities for the changes was to get rid of the jaggies for when objects were moving along the camera. Wow, they're, they're finally adding a mute list. I can't believe that the game is this old. and It's like 10, 10 years old, and there was, there's no mute list until now. Or until 7.0. Basically, until, until July. A state expulsion feature added. なんかやたらとこう入ってくるみたいな<笑>あの時とかに、はい、あのどうしてもあの入ってきてほしくないみたいな方もいたりするんで、うん、もうこれハウスに入れないとか追い出す機能とかいうのを今回はプレイヤーイベントを円滑に運営していただくために、えー、と用意してました。This year, the first half of the year is all about gaming. The second half of the year is all about computer hardware. Yeah, pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, once Final Fantasy VII comes out, 7.0 comes out. Did I say Final Fantasy VII? Once Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail, aka 7.0, Comes out. I'm pretty much set. Like that's the only game I'm gonna be playing. Most likely, I'm just I'm not gonna play any other games. Uh, at least for the first month or two that this game is out. In fact, I might start playing this game in the beginning of June, just to get caught up on the content, so that I'm not doing old content when 7.0 drops. Well, so if somebody gets, if, so, if a player gets blacklisted, like if you blacklist a player, they literally vanish from you. You can't even see them anymore. This will apply to all characters tied to the blacklisted character service account applicable to characters registered from 7.0 and onward. <laughs> the blacklist system is what killed uh, like the gold farmers, the people that sell like in-game currency. That whole market basically died off because of the whole blacklist functionality. <laughs> で姿が表示される場合でもチャットに関してですねチャットも、えー、っと基本的には内容が表示されません、うん、あ,のあなたが見たくない人が何か喋ってますはで出るんですけど、はいえー、そういう表示になります、はい、ブラックリストに登録している人が何か喋ってます、うんうん、で一応気になるから内容を見ようっていう時は発言を一時的に、えー、表示解除するっていうこともできますはい、はいでまあ、マッチングしないでくれっていう意見も分かるんですけどそうなるとめちゃくちゃ複雑なマッチングになっちゃってマッチング時間がそもそも遅くなっちゃうのとパーティー募集とかも含めてめちゃくちゃにちょっとなっちゃうのでさすがにちょっとそこまでは難しいのでごめんなさい、はいはいえー、次、これがブラックリストの強化で次、新しいミュートリスト。はいえー、こちらはですね、登録したキャラクターのチャットが見えなくなります。So the this mute list is brand new. This wasn't in the game until now.、Uh, hide a muted character's chat messages. So this is only the chat messages. So they'll still show up in the world. Like you can still see the muted character, but you can't hear what they're saying anymore. I don't know. I, I, that's good that they're doing this. I mean, I'm surprised they never had this. I personally never really had any issues with spammers, though, in the game.、Um, but that's just me. 
I'm sure it's a thing. It's it makes sense for them to add it. I'm just surprised it's like being added now. Like I thought this would have been a thing that would have been added like probably two expansions ago. That's interesting. So basically, you can opt in to see what a muted player says. Like assuming you muted them. <coughs> That makes sense if, if they're already in a group and you get put into a random group with them. Like an alliance. An alliance is, uh, what is that? Uh, 24? That's 24 man content. 8 times 3. That's a 24 man raid. So, for those that aren't familiar with Final Fantasy XIV's uh, group content, so there's the light party, which is four party members, there's the full party, which is eight party members, and then there's the alliance raid, which is basically three separate groups of eight people each in one giant group. So that's like 8 plus 8 plus 8. So you got group A, group B, and group C, and the three of them together forms an alliance group. So that's 24 people. That's the largest group of, for group content in Final Fantasy. Now, they actually did something interesting in Shadowbringers, and in uh, Stormblood, they had, they had something in Stormblood called the Baldessian Arsenal, which I think was like 40, like a 40 man raid from WoW. And there was also the, uh, what do they call it in Shadowbringers? Uh, Zadnor and Boja. They had these special dungeons, these raid dungeons that were basically, I think it was 40 man content. I can't remember how big, I think it was 40 people. So they were basically able to do. Well, Although on a, a much shorter raid duration, they were able to do what Classic WoW had for stuff like Molten Core. Although it was way more streamlined in Final Fantasy. <laughs> and that was actually some of the most interesting content that I've ever done in this game. <laughs> ワードフィルター。ワードフィルターはい。なので、A so you can basically filter out any any word that shows up in a regular message, a yell, a shout, a tell, or you can filter out specific emotes too. Data is stored client side, huh? So does that mean that if you play the game on multiple PCs, if you filter words out on one PC, if you go to the, the other PC, it won't be filtered out? で、このリストに登録された対象はま、10日間、そのハウスと庭に侵入できなくなりますと。ま、あの、永続的に使うというよりはですね、あの、このイベント中はもう本当勘弁してくれみたいな、あの、言っても聞いてくれないみたいな場
、えー、権限をこうやって分けてもらえればそれ以外の方でも、えー、とこちら制御できるようになります。はいえー、権限者や追加権限者がハウス内にいるときにブラックリストその人のブラックリストに登録されている対象がハウスに入ろうとしたときも自動的に追い出し機能が働きますな,るほどなのでブラックリスト登録している人が、ね、い,いる場合家にも入ってこれない、うん、これは、ね、自動的にそれが機能、はい、働くようになっております。はいあの権限者をブラックリスト登録したらどうなるのって、まあ、そんな人いないと思いますけど<笑>あのやってみてくださいちゃんとあのなんだろう破綻のないように動くようになってますんで、うん、そういったところはあの僕らもデバッグできっちりやってますんで、うん、ぜひぜひ、えー、見てください。That's interesting. えー、それからロードストーンの非公開設定の強化です、はいえー、非公開にする内容範囲をより細かく、えー、設定できるようになります、うんえー、このようになりますはいまあ、こういったものを、えー、項目ごとにですね設定可能になります、はい、あとは、えー、とでかいのはロードストーンのキャラクター検索の対象が This is very surprising I, I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't have any of these privacy settings until now or until the next expansion、はい、この辺あんまり実はやりたくなかったのは本当はコミュニケーションをどんどん広げてほしいんですけど、えー、全員がアノニマスにしちゃうとなんか誰が誰だよキャラになっちゃうからなんですけどうす、ねはい、もうちょっとさすがに本当にいろんな方がいらっしゃるし本当にたくさんの方が今遊んでくださっているので今回ちょっといろいろポリシーも変更して、えー、と設定を変えさせていただいております、はい、でさらに、えー、ロードストーン側にあるブラックリストの、えー、機能を強化しております追加します、はい、登録したアクティブキャラクターのアクティビティとか日記などが自分に投稿通知が来なくなると、うん、あとは自分のアクティビティっていうのが登録したキャラクターから見えないようになりますと、はい、であとはゲーム内でブラックリストに登録しているキャラクターとそのアカウント配下のキャラクターですね全部に、えー、長期の効果が適用されますと、うん、いちいちねこっちで登録し直す必要はないですよということになりますのでよろしくお願いします、はいといったところで、はい、ブラックリスト強化のお知らせでしたいやい俺今回この機能を、はいまあ、実装使用を確認して実装まあもちろん実装、ええ、実,実は実装決めたの半年ぐらい前半年よりもっと前か、うん、でじっくりあの内容を確認詰めてきて実装今回 7.0 でやったんですけど、はい、なんかやってる時にふと思ったのが、まあ、フルダイブ MMO って、はい、ねあの SAO 以降流行ってというか、ええ、結構そのゲームの世界に体感覚ごと飛び込んでゲームをするみたいなああ、はい、まあいずれなんかゲームをするのは何かゲームをするのは何かゲームをするのは何かゲームをするのは何かゲームをするのは何かゲームをするのは何かゲームをするのは Once I hit level 100 in the game, is I'm gonna go back and like do, do all those fights to farm those mounts unsynced. Because that's exactly what I did in N Walker to get the Shadowbringers mount. In uh, like when I hit level 90. I'm not gonna bother doing that stuff like when it's hard. Because <laughs> it's like, why? Because <laughs> you have to teach people how to play the game. It's, like, it's so annoying. It's like I ain't got time for that. I tried doing that in the summer of Shadowbringers, like the last summer before Endwalker,、uh, to farm like the Gwivers. I got diamond weapons mount, and I was like, okay, I'm done. Like, nah, this is like too much. Like, having to go back and do Titania, EX, and. And i m m a c u l a t e Extreme, and all that stuff. Nah, it's like, and Hades Extreme. I don't, nah, I was like, no, man. I'll come back, do that later. Warrior of Light,、mm -mm. I'm doing that later. And sure enough, even at level 90, it was annoying because you had people who didn't know what they were doing. Having to do Ruby Weapon, Sapphire Weapon, that was probably like the worst one. Definitely a memorable experience, though, to, ex to experience those fights the way they were meant to be played once and then never again, and then do it like unsynced to plus 10 levels when it's like way easier. 
あの強化させていただいたんでしっかり使っていただけたらなというふうに思います。はい、ありがとうございます。はい。それではこの後ですね、うん、えー、っと拡張版までの主だったスケジュールをご紹介したいんですけど、それに先立ちまして。一点素敵なお知らせが今回あるということでまずそちらをご紹介したいとゾディーデリンですか素敵なお知らせはいはい、はい、ではこちらですご覧くださいどうぞ、はい、どよっ、えー、こちらもですね再演のご希望を非常に、えーいただいていた妖怪ウォッチ。Okay, so Yokai, the Yokai Watch collaboration event will return on Wednesday, April 24th, which is a week and a half from now. I never did this. I never, I never bothered to do this. I'm not a big fan of the whatever this franchise is. So, やっていただければと思うんですが。えー、と追加報酬がですねありまして、今回、なななんとです次行ってください、妖怪ウォッチ、我々、妖怪ウォッチコラボの後ですね、ポートレートっていうものが、They're basically bringing back the, the FOMO events that people may have missed out on or they weren't able to complete. Right before, like, they're basically bringing it out and then it'll stick around until the expansion comes out. That's, that's usually how like any sort of live service game works. I've noticed that. Like, Genshin Impact does their big summer event, like, and then it comes out, and then it, it sticks around until their expansion comes out. Alright, here we go. Schedule until Dawn Tail release. Dawn, Dawn Trail, I mean. Yeah, here we go. So, Final Fantasy 16 crossover event is going on until, what is this? Gokai? Until May 8th? Yoka. Yoka. ちょっと猫もどうなのってまあ一緒撫でてられるように作ったんではいなのでまあ交互に行くんじゃないですかはいというわけで次行きましょう次どうぞはいよいやオッケーヨーカイヨーカイイベントはいはいはいはいはいは
でもまあだいぶ進んだコンテンツをだってあ順調ですかバ,バトルコンテンツっていうか複数人でやるコンテンツは、はい、ほぼ昨日で終わったはずおお一昨日ラスボスだったしほほほなんでもうあとはこっからはひたすらクエスト全,全チェック当選あらゆるクエストって感じですね、はいはい、ということでございましてメディアツアーやったら、うんまあ、メディアの皆さんから一斉に記事が出るんですけど、はい、しかもそらく6月初旬頃にまとめて出てきますのでお楽しみに思います。というわけで、okay, so、メディアツアーの同時に。Which will be probably like two, three hours, not a 14 hour one. That will be on the 16th of May. Oh, okay. The job action trailer will take place on the 16th of May. Dragon Quest X collaboration event returns June 5th through the 20th. So there's like a, what is that, like a two week block? And then the, oh, there's two, okay, so there's two more live letters. What we're listening to right now is a live letter. So this format where they, he talks about a bunch of stuff for like a couple of hours. That is what we're getting. So there's another one on the 16th of May and then the 14th of June. And that one on the 14th of June will be the very last one before Endwalker or before Dawn Trail. Forty-eight-hour maintenance scheduled. So basically, once the yokai event ends, no playing the game for two for forty-eight hours. Forty-two day maintenance. Wow. Because we all know what happens on the twenty-eighth. Bam! Early access for Dawn Trail begins. So basically, for me, it's like Ghost of Tsushima comes out in May on PC. After that, there's like nothing else. So, it, so I can devote like a whole bunch of time uh, to doing Final Fantasy XIV content. <laughs> the only problem, guys, the literally the only issue is Shadow of the Erd Tree is coming out the week before Dawn Trail, which means I know exactly what I'm going to be playing in that 48 hour block where there's like no Final Fantasy. <laughs> I can't help but think that this year, in terms of the way the games have released, it's like there's a bunch of games like that launch all at the same time, then you have like nothing, then you have a bunch of games all at the same time, then nothing, and then like, you know, the same thing. It's like, okay, Shadow of the Earth Tree, Final Fantasy, uh, Trails Through Daybreak, like bam, 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 and it's like done. Then after that, like nothing. Then it's gonna be all about like Zen 5 and motherboards and DDR5 and all that kind of content. He's saying that there's going to be a long patch notes list. I think that's what he said. Should you get 40? Wait, now what? Oh, he's saying the official. Okay, there we go. Official launch. Official launch. The first week of July. Man, the login queues, I hope they, I really, really hope that they fixed the, the, um, the login queues. Because, man, Endwalker's launch was so riddled with issues with login queue problems. Like, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> Shadowbringers wasn't bad. Endwalker's was bad in terms of login queues. 
ど,どの何時からやろうかっていうのを調整してるところなんですよ、はい、調整中です、はい、けどあのメンテの中のどっかでやりますからなんでえって言ってんのよ<笑>チって言ってる人もいる48時間やらないって言ったらえとかチとか言われてる The amount of green screen glare on their faces is insane here 無理無理,無理無理どんなにゆっくり読んでもそこまではいかないですはいゲストにもねちょっと来ていただきたい Yeah you can see it when he looks down That is as notes and stuff. Should I get 4070 Thai or 4080 for, for ultra wide? Is the 40, the, like,、uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't really get either of them at this point, although I guess. I guess it depends on what your budget is, but I think for that resolution, I don't know, it depends on what type of games you play. A Realm Resplendent with Warriors of Light, what is this? What are they doing? What's happening? Over 30 million players? Total accounts registered? Yeah, I was going to say GRE probably. At that resolution, GRE is probably enough. 240? Well, what is this? <coughs> What's the metric of this? What is this? What's the significance of 240? Oh, okay. Apparently, it was nominated 313 times and won 240. <laughs> I can't tell if that first part is Sekai Chu or Sekai Naka. Sekai Naka de Online Game. G-Sync compatible is free sync. G-Sync compatible means free sync, though. I don't know what you mean by G-Sync compatible. You mean G-Sync? G-Sync compatible means free sync. G-Sync itself means G-Sync. Aetherite's re. What is this? What, what is this? Oh, this is how many they've created. Okay, there's 88 teleport points in the fast travel points in the game. I didn't even know that. That's an interesting metric. That's like a trivia question right there. Like, how many, how many、uh, fast travel destinations does Final Fantasy XIV have? I didn't know. 88 of them. Wow, okay. 320. Wait, what? What? There's that many? Man, see, this is the problem. This is what you call. Uh, uh, this is not power creep. This is basically、uh, the fact that the game is really old. And they keep adding more dungeons. That there's 325 duties in the game. <laughs> What? I, okay, this is this this shows. Okay, the alliance raids. They've got on the left. They've got the Shadowbringer alliance raids. Oh no, those are the storm blow. Well, they got, they're all mixed they're all mixed together. They've got like、uh, Ultima Weapon, they've got the girl from Shadowbringers.
クリア者の数とかじゃないよね違います<笑> 292みたいな If your monitor says G-Sync compatible, it's a FreeSync monitor Have you, tro- like, have you verified that it's a G- actual G-Sync monitor? Like, what's the... Oh, you gave us the model number I mean, you can, we can check Hours of cutscenes 159 hours of cutscenes This is going to probably intimidate anybody who has never played Final Fantasy XIV and wants to experience all the content. <laughs> There's literally just 159 hours of game time just from watching cutscenes alone. Keep in mind that this doesn't include the upcoming expansion. This is literally just from start to the current patch. <laughs> ということでございました。はい。はい、じゃあ次行きましょう。続いてまた何か。四千九百十七。さあなんでしょう。うん。アープって言いそうになっちゃって。<笑> Are these the different music? <笑> This is the music stuff, isn't it? ドキドキ Four thousand nine hundred seventeen tracks. What? Oh, minutes. Okay, I was gonna say there's no way. There's like almost five thousand tracks of music. 4,972minutes。つまり、つまりね、純粋に時間経って倍になってるんじゃなくて、指数関数的にこう増えてってるってことだよね。How would you say that in Japanese? 4,000、4,900、17。ということで、続いてはゲームの統計数字じゃなくて、まあ統計は統計なんですけど、皆さん、非課線の皆さんの数字はすごいねという皆さんの力をいくつか取ってみましたので見ていきましょう。まず最初の数字こちら。一万六千トンで九十六トン。トン。一、えー、年間。一年間で。何？一年間で。地球に眠るプラスマイズの同じくらい。一個ずつ取る。皆さんどうしたかなっていう。一万六千九十六トンっていうのは。What is this? The what is this metric though? Sixteen thousand of what? 何かを皆さんどうしたかっていうとこれでした。はい。計算しますと。これ装着したマテリアなんですね。はい。計算しますと。これ装着したらグラム0になるから。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。
The range, though. What's the the uh, variable range on that monitor? Because, I mean, it might as well, like, I don't know. The monitor is old, but, I mean, it's still good. Do you even really need to upgrade, though? Like, well, I, don't, I don't even know what graphics card you currently have. Like, asking between two graphics cards without knowing what you currently have, it's, you know, it's not really going to be able to... I can't give you a good answer without knowing what you already have. America no ketchup. What? Consumption of nearly more than the annual consumption of ketchup in the U.S. America no ketchup. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, the potions? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> the amount of potions imbibed was more than the annual consumption of ketchup in the US. <laughs> You have a 1660 Super? Why are you using a 1660 Super with that monitor? <laughs> Wait, what? You have a 34 inch ultra wide with a 1660 Super? How long? Have you had the monitor from 2018 for that long with that GPU? This this is a very interesting, look at this guys, this is a very interesting metric. This is a fascinating metric, because this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Notice, Shadow Bringers has 34% 34, 34 of the player base started with Shadow Bringers. That is the WoW Refugees, because that would have been the year 2021, right before Endwalker, that that off-season year before, like between Shadowbringers and Endwalker, was when a lot of those WoW players switched over to Final Fantasy XIV. So that's at 34%. That is shocking. Man. A Realm Reborn, 26%. Only slightly more than one-fourth of the player base actually started with 2.0. I myself fall into that 24% category. Wait, what is this? Favorite mount. The favorite mount. <laughs> yeah, man, I wish I had that uh, that Ozma mount. <laughs> but that's not the most popular one. <laughs> Fatter cat? I don't have that mount. I'll tell you guys, out of this list so far, my favorite one is number nine, the Regalia Type G. Fenrir motorcycle? No, that's lame. I mean, that's okay, but whatever. The regalia, I'll take the regalia over the Fenrir like any day. The company Chocobo is the number one mount? How is Black Chocobo number 10? That is like the most generic flying mount. That's like the first flying mount you get. Regalia and Ozma, number nine and number four, are like my favorite ones. Favorite minions. Out of that list, uh, probably Midgar is my favorite one. Wind Up Harsh Front is good. No, the 3080 is fast enough for, for 1440p. It's a 1440p GPU. あの、想定の旅路というかさ、2.X のラストからさ、ほら、見てみろよ、この人間の汚さをよって 2.55で言われてさ。
キリッツで石ガールド向かってさ。I still don't understand how you got a, an ultra wide with a 16, 60 super. That, that to me is.、Uh, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around that. I guess the other question I have for you is what, what games do you play? Like, are you going to be playing Final Fantasy XIV? <laughs> Because for 1440p, you don't actually need that much of a powerful GPU for this game. Lesser Panda? I don't have that one. Lesser Panda. Fat Cat. I don't have those minions. I, the only one I have is the wind up. I've got number seven and number four, and maybe number five and. Nine and ten. Starbird is the most popular minion. How is this a thing? Like, why? Starbird? How is this the number one most popular minion? There's like so many better ones. Starbird? Clearly, I'm out of touch with the player base. I haven't played the game enough recently to, to be in touch with like what people think is cool. Alright, here we go. Favorite home point. I already know this one, guys. I'm gonna call it right now. Limza Lomenza, number one. Hands down, Limza Lomenza is going to be number one. Just you watch. Number four is Ulda. Okay, that means number three. Number three is going to be that one place from Heaven Sword. The dun dun dun. I knew. Oh, Old Charlian. Okay, never mind. I was wrong. <laughs> old Charlian. That's like an Endwalker place. That, that, I can see why. That's cool. That's a cool place. Number two is, is probably.、Um, Okay, yeah, yeah, Gridania. I, I knew it, I knew it. Limza Lominza, number one. I got it. Ichiban. Limza Lominza. Limza Lominza is always packed. You want to test the power of your CPU, you go to Limza Lominza. That is where the CPU bottleneck will happen. Guaranteed. Easily 250 players in your face as soon as you teleport in. I'm surprised old Charlian is number three, though. I don't know why Crystarium is, is number five and Ishgard's number six. I feel like that should be the other way around. Most formidable foe. Oh man, Ultima Weapon is going to show up. So is Ka、uh, Kefka and.、Um, Uwu, Uwu, and Tia. Are these just going to be all ultimates? Is this ultimates or not including ultimates? Well, let's see. Let's see. Darnus. I don't even know who those people are. Xenos. Xenos is lame. Pandemonium. Okay. Zodiac. Hydalin is number four. Athena. I've never fought her. I have no idea. I, these, this is like spoilers for me because I haven't done like post Endwalker MC. Uh, MSQ, like, I haven't done anything past 6.1. So it's like anything that's beyond 6.1, it's all spoilers for me because I have no idea. <laughs> Warrior of Light, man. Shadowbringers, hands down. I had to teach so many people how to do that fight. What is this gonna be? Diamond weapon? Number two? And Hades is number one, probably? Or is this gonna be all Shadowbringers? Watch it be Hades. You're gonna play Final Fantasy XIV and a bunch of AAA solo games, among other. Yeah. Oh. End singer? What? <laughs> What? End singer? I knew it! I knew it! I said Hades! I said Hades! I thought Hades was gonna be number two though. I'm surprised Hades is number one. End singer is number two? 
N Singer should be like number five. The, this is actually pretty interesting. So I, I fought Hades, Warrior of Light, N Singer, Hydaelyn, Zodiac. Uh, I don't know what version of Xenos they're talking about. There's multiple different ones. And then I've never fought number 10, 10, 9, and 5, and 7. I never fought those. Those, I don't know who those are. Man, this makes me want to go back to the game, though. Like, seeing all this stuff all over again. The ones that I recognize versus the ones that I don't know. This is awesome. But to, to answer your question, I guess, honestly, I really think uh, Nicholas is correct. 4070 Ti, not even the Super, but like the, well, okay, yeah, the Super, because it's, it's better than the Ti, but yeah, like the, the 4070 Ti Super or the 7900 XT. What, 7900 XT is actually better value, personally. Uh, but it, you're just kind of stuck with that G-Sync monitor. What is this? What is what is Final Fantasy to you? MMO. Fun. La the Warao. Warao. Nino. Futari. What is that? Nino. Hito. What? Basho. RPG. <laughs> Eorzea, the world. The game world. FF11? Why did someone say FF11? Oh, this is like the English ones. Okay. It's interesting, uh, the Japanese one, there was a lot of people saying like it's a place, it's it's like their, it's like their, it, their, uh, fun place. Yeah, but I guess 4070 Ti Super or 7900 XT, those are like the two choices for that monitor that I would recommend. I personally would probably go 7900 XT, because at some point you're going to want a newer, better monitor. So, that, that's why to me, I wouldn't be too, don't think too much about the G-Sync module, like, because at some point you're going to want a better monitor, so just keep that in mind, so don't let that be the limiting factor. Because most of the time, you're going to be playing above 60 FPS anyway. So at that point, as long as your monitor has a 120Hz refresh rate, like what's the point of G-Sync at that moment? You know what I mean? Saying? Like as long as it's in that range, like does it matter? No, not, not really. Forty seventy super plus better display could be an option. Yeah, I personally would. Well, okay, if you're gonna keep the monitor, forty seventy Ti super is probably the right 
one for that display, but the display is old, right? There's like better, newer displays. So just keep that in mind. That's just that's all I'm saying. Like, because the 4070 Ti Super is definitely better than the 4070 Ti. 4070 Ti was garbage. Uh, 4070 Ti Super basically fixed all the issues with the 4070 Ti in terms of the value proposition. But the I still think AMD has a lot better value for money options. Like the 700 GRE, 700 XT, especially 700 XT at like $750. Like that to me is super good value. Even the GRE with an overclock at $550, that is like an unbeatable value. I mean, that also has 16 gigabytes of VRAM at a much lower price point than any of the 4070 Ti stuff. This is the book in the... Is this in the collector's edition? Yeah, they're they're catering to the the really hardcore fans. I don't know if I'm gonna get the collector's box for this expansion. I do have the Heaven Sword and the Stormblood one. I don't have. Well, I think I have the Shadowbringers one, but I don't have the Endwalker one. <clears throat> Hey. Yeah, G-Sync, keep in mind also that if you have G-Sync turned on, your idle power for your GPU will be higher. Because your VRAM will clock at a higher speed, even when idling, because it's always trying to match your monitor's refresh rate. If you have VRR turned on. So that's another thing to be aware of. That's why it personally doesn't really matter too much. Uh... G-Sync only matters, and this is the same with FreeSync. It only matters if you're dipping below 60. But if you're getting a powerful enough GPU, you're not going to be falling below 60 FPS. So it's like, at that point, FreeSync and G-Sync don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? So, that's why I wouldn't get too caught up in that. In the whole, like, oh, I have a G-Sync module on my old monitor. Because, I mean, even if I had an old... I don't have a G-Sync display. I mean, I have a G-Sync compatible monitor that I'm using literally right now uh, with an AMD card, and it's like, okay, whatever. But that's because G-Sync compatible is FreeSync. But the point is, I never even use FreeSync because even if the monitor has it, because I'm never dipping below 60 in the games where I would actually leverage Variable refresh. Yeah, because I did my monitor upgrade almost two years ago. It was like August 2022. Yeah, anything today, any modern monitor that says G Sync compatible is basically a free sync monitor. Just keep that in mind. They're doing some kind of campaign, buy one, get one free, something like that. I haven't been paying attention. Man, I, props to the Final Fantasy XIV dev team. They are so thorough. They go over, like, everything in such great detail. You have to admire, like, the dedication that they put into all this info and... and and all the effort. Like, there's no other developers that do this. Like, there's literally no other developers that do this at this granular level. And these guys go out of their way to also get a lot of feedback from the English and just the international player base too, not just the Japanese audience. Now obviously, like they, right now, like if you can understand Japanese, then you're, you're getting a lot more value out of watching this live stream than if you don't understand Japanese. But the fact that they're, this is like for a global audience, and they're trying, they put the English sub or the English descriptions in a lot of their slides. Mm -hmm. 
Hydaelyn and Zodiac are the only two EX primals that I actually did. Like, I, well, okay, End Singer. I tried to do End Singer. I have not cleared End Singer, and then I quit the game. So it's like, uh, I don't even know who the other EX primals or EX trials are in Endwalker. For those that don't know, Zodiac is the one on the left. Hydaelyn is the one on the right. And that's what this dude is supposed to be. He's basically Zodiac and Hydaelyn combined. There's Hydaelyn. There's Zodiac. <laughs> I at least did this part because this is like the biggest part of the whole thing. Like, I don't know what came after them and End Singer. It was like, okay, whatever. The story's over, so I quit. But it's like, now I want to come back <laughs> after two e more than two years. Planetarium show? What are they doing? There's a collaboration, Final Fantasy XIV and the Konica Minolta Planetarium. あの、プラネタリウムとか行ったことないっていう人は、ちょっとこれを機会に1回プラネタリウムってどんなもんかを見るためにも行ってもらえるとね。I'm in the way of the thing the title they mentioned put myself like down here。全然あの、映画みたいな。Up here. No, I'm covering up the words. Like it's hard for me to。ただなんか、to put myself in a spot where I'm not blocking things。ありますって言って買うと一番前に、なんかあの、if you're gonna consider upgrading the monitor, also you have to keep in mind like, do you really, do you really like ultra wide? I personally don't like ultra wide. So I would just go back to a regular 16 by 9 panel, like a 4K 16 by 9 or a 1440 16 by 9. Let's go back to the Hey, so they've got three different planetariums. There's one in Ikebukuro, that's in the Tokyo area. They've got one in Yokohama, and they've got one in Nagoya, which is basically west of Tokyo, east of Osaka. And, and then they have to go and like throw, like insert a shout out, or not a shout out, they have to, they have to plug Final Fantasy 16 in here, because Final Fantasy 16 DLC, The Rising Tide is coming out later this month. Isn't, that's like next week, wow. I might actually cover that, I don't know, like, I'm kind of waiting for 16 to come to PC, so I can do the DLC stuff on the PC version of the game. Yeah, if you like ultra wide, then stick with it. はい。じゃあそちらの続報もぜひご期待ください。お願いします。はい。で、最後に一つだけですね。ちょっとこちらもご宣伝させてください。概要お願いします。現在ファイナルファンタジー 14 They've got job openings. They've got a marketing planner and a community planner. These jobs are based in uh, Minato, Minato, Minato Ku, which is a, it's like a war, is it a ward? Is that the right word? It's basically like a suburb or like a, it's in the Tokyo area. Creative Studio. I did not expect to be live this long, guys. The, uh, props to Yoshi P and his team. They're doing a 14-hour live stream. Now, I'm not going to be live for the full 14 hours. We're almost done with the live stream. Uh, he... 
I'm waiting for them to finish the main segment, which is basically, it ends in about 24 minutes. So we're going to be live for another 20-something 20, 20 minutes. And then we're going to end the stream. Because we're not going to do the show your IRL minions. We're not going to do the primals looking back. We're not going to do stroll with Yoshi P. Although stroll with Yoshi P would be very, very interesting. But that's just like way too late. Because mm. that's like three, four hours from now. Yeah, no, we're not going to be going live for that long. I'm locally recording the live stream as well, so it's like I'm gonna run out of hard drive space or something if I live stream for that long. この合間はサブ放送ぜひなんかねさっき時折で盛り上がってこれこっちにも入ってきてなんでぜひぜひよろしくお願いしますまずはPLLありがとうございましたはいありがとうございますそれでは以上をもちまして第80回ファイナルファ
and they're playing like some kind of song or something. Probably not a uh, for a what. 120 hertz, more of a two. What are we talking about? I still think 40, 40, 70 tie super would be solid no matter what option. If I get a high end enough GPU. Oh, well, uh. 40, 70 tie super is actually pretty good for that resolution. Frame gen at 120 hertz. Yeah, that GPU is pretty good at that resolution. 7900 XT is a little bit better, but they're similar. Frame, do you like frame generation? Although, I don't know, man. Frame generation is not the best thing. Like, I've tested a lot of games that have frame generation, and it's... Not a ton of need for frame gen at 120 hertz, but it's great for 240 hertz. The only thing I'm a little bit disappointed about this game, 14, 7.0, is the lack of a DX12 client. Like, the fact that there's still gonna be on DX11, that's disappointing. Because we've on we've been on this DX11 with this game since 2015. I mean, come on, guys. That's like eight, almost nine years. I mean, that is pretty much nine years. When 7th Auto comes out, it's gonna be nine years. Nine years on DX11. Where's my DX12 client for this game? Alright, here we go. This is it. This is the... This is... A Realm Reborn's cutscene? Yeah, this is A Realm Reborn. This is it, guys. This is the start of 2.0. They're playing all the... They're literally just gonna play all the cinematics back-to-back. -back. Man, Thancred looks so different back then. He looks so different. This man has changed over the years. Yeah, this is straight up Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. There's Odin. FSR can be hit or miss. The problem with FSR is like it has to be... You gotta be at like 4K and you have to be using like quality preset. Then it's okay. DLSS can go down to balanced, but anything lower than balanced, DLSS is still bad. Man, these cutscenes still hold up. They still look so good. And the music of this game is this the music of this franchise is so good. Why couldn't the game look like this? Why couldn't this have been the graphics update? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what? This looks better than whatever they showed. Although it would probably make a lot of people unsub from the game because it's like, oh, it looks way too realistic. Or it's like, I don't like this because this is not how I remember the game, you know? No, a lot of games are good with FSR. If you're in quality preset, it's fine. It's like a non-issue. All the examples where people show FSR is like FSR performance or FSR balance. 
and they're trying to upscale to like 1440p or 1080p or something, and then it looks bad. What is this? Oh, oh, they literally played the whole video so it actually showed it as if it was... Oh man, they are doing it. They're doing a marathon of all the cutscenes, all the trailers for all the expansions. Here we go. This is one of my favorite ones. Fate has cast down these heroes and their light now threatens to fade. Yes, this is it. This is Heaven Sword. This is probably my favorite trailer. This is the trailer for the very first expansion of 14. Because the thing is, the story leading up to this moment was so good. The gates of Ishgard. This is so 2015. This is so Bloodborne. This is how you hype people up for your game. <laughs> also, this is the one where the cinematic quality started looking better than in the previous trailers. It's funny, in the trailer, it's like, why is he fighting what looks like Prey Spell? I like how the Warrior Light enters Ishgard as a warrior, but he looks up and he sees a Dragoon. This is the part that made this seem so epic. He opens the window and looks outside. And you see this giant city in the mountains. Kind of like Minas Tirith in Lord of the Rings. Because remember, Heaven Sword was the first expansion that brought flying mounts to the game. So now you get to experience flight in the game. Like, before this, you couldn't fly. That was one of the big selling points of this first expansion. That was the original trailer for Heavensward. 
See, told you 2015, June 23rd, 2015. That just brings back like visions of Bloodborne on PS4. Wait, these guys are these guys have been playing this the whole time. These guys have been playing the tabletop RPG the whole time that Yoshi P has been doing the thing. Talking about like the benchmark and all the graphics changes and everything. They've been playing this the whole time, like in the background. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming up. When are they doing this? This is like. Uh, oh, it's at 4 Japan time, Tokyo time. So that's. Uh, that's actually pretty soon. So yeah, we're probably going to end the live stream. Uh, like right around now, actually. <laughs> So, it's gonna go, so the next thing on the schedule is this, <laughs> this, uh, there's a section on show us your IRL minions, I mean, okay, whatever, and then the Primal's 10th anniversary looking forward and back, that would be really nice to see, but unfortunately that's like really, really late, that, that won't be until... 90 minutes from now, so like an hour and a half from now. And then after that, uh, a stroll with Yoshi P. That will be another two and a half hour section, kind of like what we just watched. Um, but that will be him actually playing the game. So. Wait. Really? The XTX is only that much more than that? Wow, if the XTX is only $100 more than the TI Super, I would get the XTX. I mean, that's like significantly faster than the 4070 Ti Super. Keep in mind that the XTX is actually faster than the 4080 Super. I mean, it's not that much faster. They're technically still kind of in the same uh, performance category, but the XTX is the faster card. So if it's if it's as cheap as you say, like that's probably it. That's the answer right there. Like at that point, G Sync Free Sync doesn't even matter because the GPU is so much more powerful. ちょっと、あと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、
and some other stuff with levels of detail and, and the console settings. So, all right, guys, that's going to be it for the stream. Uh, once again, thank you for tuning in. If you're going to be playing Final Fantasy XIV, if you're going to be playing on the NA North America Data Center, maybe we should group up and do some, like, endgame raid content or whatever um, live on stream because I'm planning to do some of that once uh, Dawn Trail comes out. So, uh, yeah, if you guys like this content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It does help me out. It's really the only way that I get any sort of visibility uh, with the YouTube algorithm. So, uh, yeah, if you, it's totally your decision if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, if you're new to the channel. If you like PC DIY topics, PC gaming... Um, all that kind of stuff, long format discussions, free form discussions, like kind of like how this live stream went. Although this one definitely was focused on Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, get subscribed, hit that notification bell. I don't like to nag people on that. I know a lot of other YouTubers do that. I don't really typically do that in a lot of my videos. Um, but it's the only way I can grow the channel. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you all for tuning in, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.